Another perfect landing. Your turn to make breakfast, Gromit. Eggs, I think. And toast with honey today. Step to it, lad. I'm famished. Hey! Eggs today, Gromit, not porridge. Huh? I'm going to have to put the safety lock back on. Honey pipe directly from the source. Everyone in town will want their own honey tap when word gets out. I'd like to help you with breakfast, lad, but it's all part of your training. Our new enterprise is getting off to a roaring start. We may even get an order today. Uh, has the mail arrived, Gromit? Well, what did the postman bring us then? Any orders? Hand it over, lad. Did you bring the mail, Gromit? Oh, I don't know. Final demand? I don't know. This payment due now. And a disconnection? Nothing but bills, Gromit. I can't look at these before I have my breakfast. If we don't find some steady customers soon, I don't know how we'll make ends meet. Oh, all right, then. I'll open one. But just the one? Hmm... Seems your subscription to Marrow Growers Monthly is up for renewal. Don't suppose you'd consider cancelling? Thought not. Oh, better pay up then. Now, where did I put me pen? Ah, yes. That dog is getting a little too independent, if you ask me. Hi, old Wallace. Vanille here. Sorry to leave a message, but it's about that incident in the shop. That blinking mechanical mouse of yours has put me in a right pickle. I mean, it may be a sniffer 3000 with advanced cheese tracking capabilities, but it chewed through all me fancy tail and me red lister, too. Now, oh, I know we've always been on good terms, but this morning I find myself not inconsiderably discombobulated, and I can't let it happen again, I'm afraid. I'm sorry to say that with the deepest regret, and following police advice, you and your blinking contraptions are banned from my establishment until further notice. Just a reminder, Gromit, in case you've forgotten. How's that egg coming, Gromit?
after the toast again. The little tyke always manages to time his heists to perfection. Cracking eggs, Chuck. But I can't tuck in until I get my toast and honey. Done to a turn. My compliments to the chef. Honey, how sweet of you, Gromit. <laughs> now that's what I call a breakfast feast. Wasn't so difficult, was it, lad? With a hearty plate of eggs and toast under me belt, I'm ready to take on the world. Gromit, I've a strange feeling this is the day our fortunes are going to change. Morning, Wallace. May I have a word? Uh, if it's about yesterday's uh, um, little mishap... Oh, no, you see... I can assure you it, it was an accident, Mr. Penier, and I'll certainly pay for the damage to your grocery shop. I was just putting the Sniffer 3000 through its paces. It's still only a prototype, you know. Oh, I realize that, Mr. Wallace. And what better place to test out a cheese detector than in a shop with such an excellent selection of cheeses? Happened. But you'll still have to pay for the damage, I'm afraid. Yes, of course. I'll put it all right. Though funds are, how can I put this, a little tight at the moment. Only until our new business is up and running. Aye, well, that's what I'm here to talk about. I understand you and Gromit are in the honey business now. Fresh deliveries daily, from B to you. <laughs> Ah, well, perhaps I can help you get on your feet. I'm having my annual sounding of the Crumpets Festival, and I'm clean out of honey. Can you deliver 50 gallons? 50 gallons? By tonight? Tonight? It'll more than cancel your debt, and it'll be good advertising for you. What do you say? I say... I say yes! We're in business, lad! Heads up, no time for slacking. From B to U has landed its first major order. 50 gallons of honey by tomorrow. I want this place to be a hive of activity. It's your chance to show the world what sort of workers you are. They're certainly buzzing with excitement. Or maybe they're hungry. Did you remember to feed them this morning, Gromit? Never mind, lad. I'll do it. Mm. 
bees love my motivational posters. Nothing like an inspirational poster to boost worker productivity. For some reason, my boys aren't terribly fond of this one. Look alive in there. Ah. No honey yet, Gromit. I wonder if there's something else I need to do to prime the pump, as it were. The bees are expecting a big supper. The remote control for my sniffer 3000. Too bad about the teasing problems. Still, this might come in handy. Flowers. The perfect meal for a hungry hive. Uh, bon appetit. Oh. Hmm. Not exactly a flood, is it? Hmm. Flowers, Gromit. That's the weak link in our production chain. We need more flowers. My workers are very devoted to their queen. Ah, there's the hatch from me rocket ship. Remember that moon holiday, Gromit? Now where can I find a whole lot of flowers in a hurry? Beautiful morning, Mr. Wallace. I'm pleased to see you've emerged from your subterranean lair. Been doing a spot of gardening, have you, Miss Flit? Working my green fingers to the bone. But the hard work appears to be paying off. Indeed it does. Blooms everywhere. I call it my purple paradise. It certainly looks delicious. I mean... I imagine it would look delicious if you were an insect. You mean, if I were a bee? Well, now you mention it. You want to feed my flowers to your bees? That is, if you don't mind. How many would you like? As many as you can spare. Oh, you can have all you want, Mr. Wallace. Oh, much obliged, Miss Flit. Here. You can jolly well grow your own. Uh, right ho. I say, those roses look appetizing. Uh, if you're a bee. I'm sure they do. And they smell heavenly. But they're not here to be trampled over by your buzzing bees. I hadn't noticed those flowers before. I shouldn't wonder. They're morning glories. And they're usually tucked up in bed by the time you emerge from your underground lair. Their scent is divine. Attracts a lot of bees, I suppose. Swarms of them. But I don't let them linger. That flower hasn't bloomed yet. I know it hasn't, the lazy thing. Oh, but the way will be worth it. Oh? This flower will be the piece de resistance of my purple paradise. And the scent, absolutely heavenly. I'm simply mad about the purple pansy. No flowers in here. There's nothing growing here. And whose fault is that? You had a garden, Wallace, but you raised it to the ground to feed your silly bees. Now, you're making eyes at mine across the fence. But you shan't be plucking any of my blooms. Kindly reserve your green fingers for number 62.
I wonder what happened to his little cricket bat. There now, with hard work and a little luck, you should have a nice bed of flowers in two or three months. I can't wait two or three months. I've got a deadline. This evening. Ugh, you poor simple man. Nothing grows that quickly. I wonder. Rex Armstrong's quick grow muscle formula. Watch them sprout in seconds. Hmm. If it works on people, perhaps I could adapt it to work on flowers. Three miracle ingredients. Grow team, energize, strongium. Well, I need a miracle and fast. It shouldn't be too tricky to knock up a batch myself. Then we'll see who's got the grandest garden in West Wallaby Street. The hive will be humming in no time. Can't take an old soldier by surprise. Morning, Major Crumb. It is, if you don't mind enemy invasions. I beg your pardon. Didn't you get my message? Received intelligence of a major air assault. Expect the sirens to sound any minute. Hope you know where your nearest air raid shelter is. I do recall something about that, but Major Crumb. Are you sure you're not mistaken? I know, I know, I've made predictions before, but I'm not crying wolf. This time, I've got proof. A jar? It's what's inside the jar that counts. Incontrovertible evidence that the enemy is on the move. Does it? I can only see a snail. Of course it's a snail. But what's she trying to tell us? That's the important thing. Uh, what is she trying to tell us? Look at her, man. She's retreated into her shell in the middle of the day. And that means only one thing. It means she knows trouble is about to strike from the heavens. Law of nature, Wallace. Learned it in France during the war. Never wrong yet. Good man, Wallace. I see you at least appreciate the seriousness of the situation. Now, spread the word. If people don't believe what an old soldier has to say, perhaps they'll listen to the snail. You're looking at my case, aren't you, Wallace? Well, I suppose I was, Major. Bet you'd like to know what's inside. I am curious, yes. This case is packed full of government issue protein bars. Protein? Rations, Wallace. Emergency rations for emergencies, obviously. Been stockpiling them since the war. Enough nutrition in them to feed a man under fire for a whole day. And very tasty they look, too. Tasty? They're foul, but packed with high-strength protein. I'd love to try one. Out of the question, I'm afraid. You don't have clearance. And besides, protein bars are only issued in the event of civil emergencies. Orders are orders, Wallace. Couldn't you spare just one protein bar? Stop this insubordination at once, man! They are for emergencies only, when supply lines are down and a man's got no other way of keeping his strength up. But if, as you say, we're expecting some kind of airborne incursion... Indeed we are! Expecting the air raid sirens any minute! Mr. Wallace, I've got something for you. Much obliged. That looks like... Can it really be cheese? Indeed it is, Wallace. Eventually, Dale, your favorite. And am I to take it that these are... Yes, free samples. Go on, duck in. Don't mind if I do, Mr. Paneer. One for now. And one for later. I'm looking forward to your festival of crumpets, Mr. Paneer. I'm afraid you're banned from my store, Wallace. 
ever heard due to the devastation caused yesterday by your invention. I'm ever so sorry, Chuck. May I have another, Mr. Mayor? Go ahead, Mr. Vallis. Nature's pick-me-up. Dear me, too much gorgonzola before bedtime, I fear. Don't forget, Mr. Vallis, 50 gallons by sunset. Pity it's closed. Oh, I could murder a sausage roll or two. Ah. Hmm. Well, what were those three miracle ingredients again? Ah, yes. Groating, Energides, and Strongium. I used the last of me Energides the other day. To fuel up my sniffer 3000. Wonder if the landlord would be interested in subscribing to my honey service. No, no sense in looking for new orders when I haven't fulfilled the first. Hey, up, Wallace, love. How's business? Inadvisable. So, Wallace, in the honey business now, I hear. Oh, you've heard the buzz, have you? <laughs> oh, indeed I have. It's all over town. That'll never get off the ground. Stupid idea, if you ask me. And nobody did. Couldn't get honey out of a honey jar, that one. Excuse my husband. He's a right misery gut sometimes. Uh-oh. Hey, it's not closing time yet. My poor Sniffer 3000. I only just put the finishing touches on it yesterday, and it's already fallen afoul of the law. If it isn't Wallace, I had a notion you'd be nosing round the police station this morning. Uh, mo morning, Constable Dibbins. You're off to an early start today. Not planning any more visits to the shops, are you? Oh, no. Yesterday was a one-off. I'm in town on business. Is that so? Have you delivered the message? Have you shown them the snail? I'm not sure the snail will convince them, Major Crumb. If she doesn't, the air raid siren will. But by then, it may be too late. May I show you something, Constable Dibbins? Is it important? It might be. That's a snail, Wallace. Do you notice anything peculiar about it? Only the person what's holding it. Do you have a sweet tooth, Constable? Well, I have been known to dollop it on a crumpet now and again. Then perhaps you'd like to subscribe. I only procure my honey from a reputable sources. You can rely on from B to you for your honey needs, Constable. As our motto says, all the sweet and none of the sting. So long as it's nothing like your Sniffer 3000 cheese detecting device. Do you know anything about snails, Mrs. Gabberly? Uh, I know they eat them in continental parts. Well, yes, but do you think there's anything special about this one? To be honest, I couldn't rightly tell. Just bear with me for a moment, Mr. Fenea. Major Crumb wanted me to show you this. That's a snail, Mr. Wallace. I know. Why are you showing me a snail? Well, it's in its shell, you see, and according to Major Crumb, when a snail goes into its shell during the day, it means we can expect untold airborne activity of an unpleasant nature. Go for Wallace and get some rest. Reckon you've been overdoing the inventing. Don't forget, Mr. Wallace, 50 gallons by sunset. Well... What do they have to say now that they've seen the snail?
Well, I haven't exactly shown it to everyone, but you must! Look at that poor lass! Not a care in the world, no idea that the alien hordes are about to descend. She doesn't want to face the truth, but it's your duty to shove it in her face! Squirrel Nick McTaber. But what if he did? Force never solved anything, Wallace. Kindness. That's what's called for. Nice squirrel. Uh, kind squirrel. Be a good chap and drop the tea bag, will you? Mere words, Wallace. Why don't you offer something to the furry deer? There must be something he likes better than tea bags. Realize this may seem a trifle irregular, but Major Crumb insisted I show you this. It's uh, uh, oh. a snail in my garden. Have you lost your mind, Wallace? Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest. And to what do I owe the pleasure of this return visit? To your mind at ease, Constable. All our bees are bonded and insured. Hmm, not killer bees from abroad, are they? Certainly not. They're West Wallaby Street born and bred. At summit, I suppose. Must be awfully hot under that helmet, I reckon. A sunny day like today. It's a trifle sweltering, yes. But danger and discomfort are all in the line of duty for an officer of the law. Though most folk don't appreciate it. Oi, come back here, you thieving rascal. That's my tea bag. I won't have you threatening that dear little creature. Not while he's in my garden. Oh, there's Miss Sniffer 3000, banged up like a common criminal. Oh, breaks my heart. That cheese detector's not a bad machine, just a bit over keen. It's all the energites in its system. Energites? It seems to me, yes. Energites is one of the ingredients in Rex Armstrong's Quick Pro Muscle Formula. I used my last Energite battery to fuel the sniffer. I'll have to get it back if I want to finish the formula. Fear not, my little cheese sniffing friend. Soon have you out of there. That mattress looks awfully hard. But just as well the sniffer 3000 goes into sleep mode automatically. Mr. Paneer will unveil my honey at tonight's festival of crumpets. Is that so? Well. If Mr. Paneer's prepared to take a chance on you, I suppose I can too. So, can I sign you up for my honey service, Constable Dibbins? I'll pop over to Mr. Paneer's and have a taste, if I like it. And there's no undesirable side effects. We'll see. How much does a helmet like that weigh? Eight pound and five ounces. Some days feels more like 80 pounds. I've got to get my Sniffer 3000 out of jail and my Energites out of the Sniffer. Oh, missed. The Sniffer's just trying to get to the cheese, but the machine sounds like it's crying. Oh. Almost brings a tear to my eye just watching. I wonder where Major Crumb disappeared to. Thank heavens you made it to the shelter. I'd given you up for lost. Caught in the crossfire, were you? Any breakthroughs on the honey front, Gromit? 
I see you've met Private Grummet. Fine soldier, that lad never speaks out of turn. What's the news from above, citizen? Chaos and destruction? You've got to get your mind off the carnage up there. Would you like to hear one of my old war stories? Might help pass the time? Well, I hate to... Uh... Oh, of course you would. I brought visual aids. Uh, now, there's a sight. That's me posing with mother next to my 40 millimeter bofers. Look at the size of that monster. Big Betty, we called her. The gun, not my mother. <clears throat> Who's that fellow? That's me as a young recruit, off to basic training. How oh, I cried when they cut off my golden curls. But I cheered up as soon as they issued me with a beautiful set of dog tags. Best useful dog tags. If you happen to forget your rank or name, you've got it right there. Never go into battle without your dog tags, Wallace. <clears throat> what a face. That's me kitted out for heavy combat. That helmet took many a dent before the war was through. Without it, I could have become seriously loopy. Take my advice, Wallace. Never go into battle without a regulation helmet like the one in this picture. Sounds like you were quite a soldier, Major Crumb. Well, Wallace, why the past tense? Uh, oh dear. Once a soldier, always a soldier. Something you civilians will never grasp. And I'd be happy to prove it by charging into the fray. That is, if I were recommissioned and had a proper helmet with a cute little brim, and if I could find someone to take charge of this shelter and distribute the protein bars. Pardon me, Major. About those groating bars of yours. Rations, Wallace. Emergency rations for... Emergencies, obviously. Been stockpiling them since the war. Enough nutrition in them to feed a man under fire for a whole day. And very tasty they look, too. Tasty? They're foul, but packed with high-strength protein. I'd love to try one. Out of the question, I'm afraid. You don't have clearance. And besides, groating bars are only issued in the event of civil emergencies. Orders are orders, Wallace. By George, this is an emergency. Private Grubbit! I hereby issue you one groating bar. Guard it well, and see that it lasts you all day. Wallace, here's one for you as well. Much obliged. Grubbit, you're out of uniform. A soldier should always be battle ready. Look at the big fella next to you. He may be in a shelter, but he knows where his helmet is. Ouch! What did you expect, Wallace? You can't snatch a soldier's helmet like that and not hear about it. Gromit could do the job. Private Gromit? Can I entrust my precious cache of protein bars to a ponder? Perhaps so. He's proven himself a trusty foot soldier. Yes. If I am called away to the front, I'd feel comfortable leaving Private Gromit in charge. But I haven't been recommissioned. Wait! Careful, Wallace. You are heading into hostile territory. The enemy has clearly landed and most likely set up camp in West Wallaby Street. Who knows what the blighters have done to our once peaceful neighborhood? If you make it back alive, you'll have to give us a full report. In the meantime, eat your protein rations. The protein will keep your strength up, especially if you're captured. Brave lad! We'll keep the home fires burning. Cold toast. Shame to let it go to waste. Me porridge gun could prove fatal if it fell into inexperienced hands. Oops. The living room door's stuck. Oh, right. It's a storage room now. It's empty. I could have sworn there was a tea bag left. 
Hold on a minute. Strongium. That's one of the ingredients in Rex Armstrong's Quick Grow Muscle Formula. I need that tea bag. Mr. Cavalli. Gone away. Went to Timbuktu. Won't be back until spring. I, I, I noticed you received my petition for early release of the Sniffer 3000, Constable Dibbins. Yes. And I notice it's attracted the signatures of just one man and his dog. We're only appealing for natural justice. But your blinking cheese detector thingamy, what do you call it, destroyed an entire grocery store. Uh, teething problems. It's still only a prototype. A prototype? It's a villain, if you ask me. A diabolical device. You can see that in its face. My machine isn't evil, Constable Gibbons. It's just got a short fuse and a few loose nuts. Hmm, we'll see. I'm going to formally interview this glorified Tin Can of yours, and if it can convince me that it's not a menace to society, then perhaps I'll release it into your custody. Could those be... Uh, I couldn't help but notice the flowers on your window ledge, Mrs. Gabberly. Ah, lovely, aren't they? Bring a touch of summer to the town square. Especially the purple pansies. Always been partial to pansies, me. You should see the flat. It's full of them. They're blinking weeds, if you ask me. Can't abide them. Oh, go and suck a lamb in, you moaning ninny. Ah. Oh, now look what you've done, you clumsy old! And open up that window when I'm yelling at you! All right, <laughs> but only to prove your insults don't get to me anymore. <laughs> I can deflect them all. Is that so? Pardon me, Mrs. Gabberly. I wonder, uh, that is, could you spare a... Sorry? Give me a verb, Wallace. An action word. Oh, uh, playing a word game, are we? In a manner of speaking. Oh, well, let's see. A verb. Savage can be a verb. Ooh, I like that. That's a good one. Now I need a thing. A thing? Aye, you know, something physical you could touch. Something I can touch? Turkey? Why not? Now a descriptive word, if you please. Hmm. Uh, mild? Oh, oh, oh that's a corker, that is. <laughs> Last one. Nearly done. I need another thing. Or like a person or animal. A person or animal? Hmm, now, let me see now. Gentlemen? Yes, that's a thing. What is it now? Go, oh, savage! A turkey, you mild gentleman! Hey! You do know how to wound a bloke, Winnie! Eee! Ha ha! Got him that time! Serves him right for being such a grumpy old granddad! Would you mind, uh, if I, uh, that is, could you see your way fit to lending me that pot of pansies, Mrs. Gabberly, uh, for business purposes? Business purposes? Well, be my guest. I've got bunches of them. That's the racket Gromit used when he took the cup at the Brambleton Open, K9 Division. Mmm, last night's bedtime snack. Gorgonzola makes a nice change from Wensleydale. Oh, hot as blazes out here it is. Can you 
you see fit to grant my appeal, Constable Dibbins? Not on your Nelly. That heap of nuts and bolts is now but trouble. Could you give me a single straight answer when I tried to interrogate it? It only responds to certain commands. I know, I programmed it. Perhaps you could try a gentler approach? Well, I'll have another chat with it. More friendly like. Oh, yes. Oh, much obliged, Constable Dibbins. I ain't promising nothing, mind. We had a little chat. Look at me when I'm talking to you. That's more like it. Now you've had time to think, what can you tell me about what happened yesterday? Feel bad about what you did, do you? He's weeping. Maybe this contraption's got feelings after all. Now, I want a truthful answer. If I release you from custody, will you do it again? Well, I'll be done. The prisoner has been interviewed. Yes. And having exhibited signs of repentance, I am prepared to release you into your protective custody. Provided, Wallace, you give me an assurance that you'll keep your blinking eye on him. Or it. Or whatever he answers to. Oh, I'll keep an eye on him, Constable Dibbins. You have my word on that. Purple pansies. Pucker pollen producers, I'll bet. Oh, yes. They positively drip with pollen. Sweet enough to drive a bee wild with desire. But your bees aren't getting a drop. Not from my garden, anyway. Drop that tea bag, you tyke! And you can drop your fist, Mr. Wallace. Here you are, little fella. Try some toast. Yes, do feed him. I'm sure the little mite's hungry. What are you looking for, exactly? Miss Flit, if you'll just take a look at the pansies, I think you'll... I told you, Mr. Wallace. I refuse to let those yellow hooligans have the satisfaction of... Oh, Apple. You see? They're mending their ways. They just needed a firm talking to, that's all. Mother forgives you, you naughty little pansies. Sweet satisfaction. Action, Mr. Woods. Yes, indeed. Very sweet. So that's where the dog tags went. I'm sure Gromit will be glad to get them back. You see, Private Gromit, I told you he'd make it back to us alive. Our Wallace is a fighter. Bagged a few of those blighters, did you? Found these in the hall, Major Crow. Dog tags. I've been recommissioned. Bound to happen, of course. Can't leave good military material sitting on the shelf. My place is in the treasures. Mm, yes, that's all very well, I suppose. But I'd need a good, sturdy helmet with a cute little brim like the one I had in the war. Ah, Queen, God bless her. Sure, she looks thinner. Last time I stood to attention during the national anthem. I thought you might find this useful, Major Crumb. A helmet? By George Wallace, there's nothing like a good helmet. Makes a fellow want to put himself in the path of projectiles. If you know what I mean. Good heavens, 
I shouldn't be skulking around in a cellar like a frightened rat. I'm a soldier by thunder. Private Rollett, I hereby appoint you officer commanding this air raid shelter. Here, you pass out the rations. I've got a war to win. to get my hands on a protein bar. Gromit. Request dispensation of protein bars, uh, soldier. The mixomatic will be perfect for whipping up a tasty growth formula. One unit of energized fluid for a creamy finish. One dose of strongium into the mix. <laughs> One generous chunk of protein to give it texture. Now to mix up my very own quick grow muscle formula. That ought to do it. Somatics all mixed up. Stop! Stop! Help! Grommet! Oh, thanks, lad. Checking to see if anything's sprouted yet, Mr. Wallace. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, Miss Flit. Really, I don't see what you're hoping to... Oh, I don't believe it. It works. It works. The homemade quick road miracle muscle formula works. We're in business now. You see, Gromit, look where a bit of enterprise can get you. If I hadn't found that flyer you chucked in the bin, I'd never have been able to concoct my miracle grow formula. And then where would we be? You really must be careful what you chuck out, you know? Uh, Lincoln, Nora! Oh, my word! I think I'm going to faint. This ought to be plenty of fuel for the old pollinator. Champion, that is. Fifty gallons of honey and just in time for my annual tea and crumpet festival. Pleasure doing business with you, Wallace. Always aim to please, our bees. That's the last of our bills, Gromit. And we've got just about enough left over for that little holiday we've been planning. This year, I fancy... Blackpool. Oh, oh yes, lad. I think our money troubles are over at last. Air raid! Air raid! Battle oh stations everywhere! Not this again. Excellent vantage point. Prepare for a crash landing, you devils! Sorry, Wallace, but I'm going to have to come near your dining room. Now, just a minute, Major Cross. No time to argue, old man. The whole town's under bombardment. But here they come! <laughs> An egg from it. Giant bees! Heaven help the good citizens of West Wallaby Street! Civilians out! But that's an order, Wallace! Private Gromit, kindly escort this civilian from the battle zone. For Queen and Country, soldier! That's right, soldier! Help steady my aim! Blast! <laughs> Double blast! Thunder got away! Back in the air! Blasted! Bad the bounder! Try again! 
nothing out of that one, live boy. Not the bladder. Oh, we does aid to you, sir. Blast, Ed. Double blast. Bullseye. Back in the air. Blast it. The Faith Soldier! West Wallaby Street needs you! Good heavens, Gromit! You don't suppose those monsters have anything to do with our honey-making operation, do you? Bumbling egg! My quick-grow formula! It didn't just affect the flowers! Just hope it's a wrong number and not more bad news! Mr. Paneer, uh, well, of course you're upset. Being dive-bombed by giant bees isn't good for any business. Uh, we're doing all we can to get the situation under control. Uh, normal honey service will be resumed as soon as possible. Uh, with normal-sized bees, that's a promise. There's a giant fly in the soup, lad. And it's shaped like a bee. They're taking over the town. Time to read the riot act. I am their employer, after all. Oh! They won't listen. They're completely out of control. This funny business has a sting in the tail and no mistake. No! Do something from it! Hello, from B to... Oh, Constable Dibbins. Ah, Mr. Gabble here. I ain't much good at eating on Mumbai. But I spoke out a turn yesterday. You're not as daft apers after all. What I said to you, I'll take it all back. You're a credit to the town. Just a minute. What's this? Giant Biggin Bees! Oh, my kitty heart! There's only one thing can boot round here. What could have caused this? with the auto flip frying pan lad the timer mechanism is very delicate it's liable to spring at odd moments not about to let a few hooligan bees keep you from your business. Your master certainly made a mess of things with that sniffer watching call it. But yesterday was a walk in the park compared with today's mess. Giant bees! Ooh, blinking Nora. Look at Mr. Paneer shut up in his shop like a prisoner and all on account of a few blinking bees. You don't see Winnie Gabberly chucking in the towel. Didn't close during the Hedgehog Riots of 72. And I ain't closing now. Besides, where would I go if I did? I ain't going back to it flat with old man Gabberly. Not till he says he's sorry. Tossed out all my pansies, he did. Always gallivanting round that one. Can't sit still for a minute. Still yesterday's news, I'm afraid. Delivery man hasn't been today. Too scared of bees, I reckon. I say, 
said, get out. I may be knocking on, but I ain't finished yet. For the love of Mike, Winnie, you want to get a seat full of stingers? When are you going to shut down that blinking shop and come upstairs? When are you going to say sorry for them rough things you said to me before? <laughs> never seen such a contrary old mare. Well, if that ain't the lemon calling the mustard sour. Is that you, Winnie? Are you coming back to me at last? Oh, it's just that dog. Moggy off your mongrel. And if she sent you, tell her I ain't gonna come crawling. Gabbily, don't beg. He's right gormless, that husband of mine. And with never a kind word for his hard-working wife. You can't imagine what it's like living with a stubborn off like that. Well, I'll show him I can be just as stubborn. I'll stay here till he says sorry, or the bees carry me off. Close the gate. Back your carcass up here, Winnie. Please close the gate. No. Gabby don't say please, and he don't say sorry. Never? To some, maybe. But not to his wife if he don't feel like it. Matter of fact, I did apologise. Not two hours ago. To me? No, to somebody else. Don't count unless it's to me! Ah. Yoo-hoo! Grommet! Up here! Now, listen to me, nice doggy-woggy. I'm trapped in this tree by giant bees. Do you understand? You must take a message to your master. I need him to get me down from here. Can you tell him that? Oh, uh, wait a minute. Give him this. It's a note. Ah, Mr. Gabble here. I ain't much good at eating humble pie, but... I spoke out a turn yesterday. You're not a daft but after all. What I said to you, I'll take it all back. You're a credit to the town. Well, biting dogs come limping home. There now, weren't so hard, were it? Is that you, Winnie? Breaking code of silence, are you? No need for silence, now you've shown a bit of humility. Humility? Me? Never. Oh, you don't fool me. You're just a big old softy, and I know it. Hey, I need me head examined, keeping shop open when town's crawling with giant bees. What's got into you, Winnie? Stay back, I say. Oh. Winnie Gabbley! Listen here now, my canine constable. It isn't strictly police procedure, but I might see me way clear to uh, deputise you. Just temporarily, mind, until this bee problem is taken care of. Would you like that? Right then. I hereby deputise you. Go get them, boy. Well, don't hurt them. That'd be police brutality. Catch them alive if you can. For the delay, Mr. Paneer. I think you'll find the streets are now be free. Thank heavens for the boys in blue. Now, I'll have to ask you to accompany me to the station. There's some paperwork we need to fill out. Nothing too bothersome. Happy to do my part. It's citizens like you what make my job a pleasure, Mr. Paneer. I know Constable Dibbins. Who 
Well, yes, like I said, he's very well trained. Right then, goodbye, constable. Good work, lad. Seems you took care of the downtown gang good and proper. But so long as they're still supersized, our job's only half done. I'd better get to work on a reverse growth formula. What's this, lad? An SOS note? From Miss Flit. Why didn't you show it me earlier? Hang on, Miss Flit. Help is on the way. Ow! It's no use, lad. The bees outside may be neutralized, but the ones inside are still buzzing mad and they won't let me leave. It's up to you, Gromit. Man, Private Gromit, help me bring these blighters down! Auf Wiedersehen to you, sir! I feel like a young man again. Calls for a celebration, Private. Meet you in the mess in 20...
pacified all the bees, Gromit. Good lad. I knew I could count on you. That's right. Poor Miss Flit is still trapped in that tree, isn't she? I'm coming, Miss Flit. Oh, it seems I'm underdressed. Gracious! Hang on, Miss Flit. <laughs> So that's the story, Miss Flit. I'm afraid my miracle growth formula led to some uh, super-sized problems. I hope you're going to get rid of the infernal stuff. Oh, I am. And rest assured, all the bees have been dealt with safely and humanely. Well, that's a relief. But weren't you scared, facing down an angry swarm of giant bees all by yourself? Frightened? Oh, well, I, uh... Well, I was heavily outnumbered, of course, but uh, they soon saw who was boss and that the uh, sting was on the other foot. I was terrified. That's only natural, Miss Flit. Uh, uh, well, I had a twinge or two myself at times, you know, but keep a cool head. That's my motto. Look your adversary square in the eye and never let yourself get carried away. Pollinate a thing of Egypt to take all the hard work out of honey making. Oh, I'm beginning to think I should never have mixed this growth formula at all. I ought to chuck it away. Hey, easy old girl. No need to get excited. Put me down gently and no one will get hurt. Oh dear, nothing in the beekeeper's manual about aerial abduction. Help! me loose, we've got to get her to drop me. This little episode in one piece. More than I can say for the autopilot, I'm afraid. Look, the autopilot! Oh dear, looks like our troubles aren't quite over. Look out behind you, Robin! 
Keep her at bay. I'll try and lose her in here. I don't reckon we're going to lose her in this tunnel after all. Oh, perhaps it'll get too narrow for her to follow. Hmm, perhaps the honey could use a little kick. As if we didn't have troubles enough, I'm missing my favorite radio program. about raining cats and dogs, our plumbing's in a right pickle. Fetch me my spanner, lad, while I stick me finger in the dike. Just the job. Bring it here now, will you, lad? Bring me my spanner, lad. Well done. Our troubles are over. Whoops. Crikey, that was a shock. Best trip the circuit breaker, lad. And stay clear of the water. It's electric. Look out, lad. The tide's coming in. Best find another way to the circuit breaker. Tommy, have you gone crackers? You'll get yourself electrocuted. The current's too strong. You'll have to find some other way to reach the circuit breaker. Let's not pass from it. Careful, lad. That's extremely volatile compressed rocket gas. Ex-NASA. There's no way out, lad. Don't do it, lad. Just blow yourself to smithereens. Lincoln, Laura. Well done, Gromit. Torby fixed in a jiffy. Just a moment. Turn to the right. And now it's safe to hit the light. That's better. Oh, there you are. Well, we'd best clean up. Crack on, lad. There's a lot to do. Sorry about the unseasonal weather. I'm afraid it means we'll have to put off our little trip to the seaside. Unless we bring the seaside to us. Look, 
here. We've already got a cellar full of water. Just a few more items. There we are. And we can enjoy the seaside from the comfort of our own home. <laughs> Won't that be something, lad? We'll stay home for the holidays and have our own beach to boot. Lucky the rain's let up for now. I'll be back in a trice with all the necessaries. Sun, sand and beach umbrella coming up. Hmm, I'm sure Miss Flit won't mind if I take just one. No beach supplies in there. Picking you up, lassie. We have a date. Surely you're not still thinking of the beach. It's freezing cold and might rain any moment. Ah, a little wet never dampened the spirits of my biscuit. Grab your wellies and we'll be off. Duncan, I really don't think so. You must have... Don't be ridiculous. Oh, hello there, Wallace. Come and meet Duncan McBiscuit. He's an old friend. <laughs> Of course, you know my two precious darlings, Fuji Woo and Tinky Wee. Say hello to Mr. Wallace, Angels. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, look, Gromit, it's your friends from next door. Cute little fellows. Oh, yes. They're show dogs, you know. Prize winners. They're my pride and joy. Well, I won't keep you. No, 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 no. Duncan was just leaving. Leaving with you, lassie, for a day on the beach. But what if there's a cloudburst? I don't consider thunder and lightning very pleasant beach companions. But there's no thunder and no lightning. Can you hear any thundering? Any cracking or booming? Well, can you? Maybe I can. Just hush your tongue a moment, will you? Ahem. <clears throat> You wouldn't go to the seaside today, would you, Wallace? You'd stay inside with a cosy cup of tea, inventing some clever thing, wouldn't you? It's certainly cosier indoors. Just so. Now, Duncan, it's time you were on your way. On my way? Felicity! I refuse to go out in a thunderstorm. Oh, that's no thunderstorm. You can't hear no thundering, can you? Maybe I can hear thundering. Just button your bagpipes for a moment, will you? You can't hear no thunder, can you? Not even a wee tinkle. I suppose not. I say, that's a handsome beach, Bronny. Perhaps you'd like to borrow it. You're most welcome. We won't be needing it as we're not going anywhere. Oh, yes, we are, lassie. Oh, no, we aren't, Duncan. You can borrow the brolly once Duncan and I have finished our little discussion. Oh, I'm dry here at home, if you don't mind. Oh, dear fun. It won't be any fun today, Duncan. No. We must act now before the flood. Gather the townsfolk. We'll stack the sandbags to the north. South and east. Still time if we hurry. Look lively now, soldier. No, 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 you can't dump these sandbags here. Just, just wait a moment, Major, please. Tom Dithering, you dunderhead. The town's being swept under. It's now being swept under, Major. And you're beginning to be a public nuisance. Uh -huh. Yes, soldier, out with it. Uh, well, uh, if you'd like to unload these sandbags, I know just the spot. Just as I told you, the people are pleading for sand, and we've got to give it to them. I'd like to give it to you, you loony old goat. But if you've got a need for sandbags, Wallace, I hereby grant you permission. Oh? You grant permission? Indeed. Take all you want, Wallace. Infernal cheek! I'm the commanding officer here, you jumped up Jobsworth, and I hereby revoke permission. 
Can't you be cooperative just this once, Major? Cooperative? Don't know the meaning of the word. Sounds subversive to me. All right, Major, how about this? Why don't we ask Wallace here who's in command? This young Pongo? Hmm. Very well. Why not? Tell us, soldier, who holds rank here? Remember your training. We are waiting, soldier. Two fine flavors that work well together. We are talking about who's in charge, not flavors. Just a moment. Are you saying that instead of bickering over who's in charge, we should be working together as a team, like uh, steak and kidney? Uh, are you saying that in a crisis like this, we must act as one, like a well-trained commando unit? Actually, it's a sign. Exactly. A sign that we can now rise above our squabbles. Very well, then. Um, here's what we'll do. We'll send these sandbags off with you. Thank goodness. Well, I'll be off then. I can hear an op meat pie calling me name. Yes, I can. Ernest Dibbins, it's saying. It's tea time. Fetch the blinking ketchup, Ernest. Now oh, then, soldier, all I need is your requisition form. Requisition form? That's right. Got to play by the book. Can't let the spies sabotage operations, can we? Spies? Surely you've heard about the spies from abroad. They're everywhere. Don't look so rattled, man. Just bring me your requisition form, and you'll soon be neck deep in splendid sandbags. Oh, right then. Afternoon, Mrs. Cavalli. Hello, Wallace. Lovely weather, isn't it? Well, uh, I, uh... I'm joking, Pat. I know it's rotten. Had to cancel me holiday. That's a shame. Certainly is, being stuck with old misery guts here. I heard that! He don't miss a word I say, except when I ask him to do summit. Ah, sitting behind a till all day ain't exactly hard labour. What would you know about hard labour? I could run this place a sight better than you, if I had a mind to. If you had a mind? What will it be, love? Looking for something to read? Take your pick. I'll put it on your slate. Rotten weather on the way tonight, they say. All set. Hey, make sure he don't nick any sweets. Mind your own business. That old misery guts thinks he could run this shop. <laughs> he couldn't run a bath. Thinking weather, eh, Wallace? It is rather gloomy. Like my business. Not a single customer all day. My sizzling summer sale has lost its sizzle. Stormy weather ahead, I'm afraid. Oh? Oh, no. After all that, my sizzling summer sail is ruined. I go on holiday, but the weather's a washout. Will the sun never shine on yours truly? That's quite a light, Mr. Paneer. It's a searchlight. I say, no shortage of candle power there. Bright as the sun, don't you think? Wonderful for bringing in the big spenders. When the weather's fair, that is. I say, I wonder where a person might acquire such a light. You're welcome to borrow this one, Mr. Wallace. There won't be any sizzling summer sail tonight. Not in this blinking weather. That's very kind of you. Always happy to help. Oh, ho, ho. this light'll make a smashing sun. What's the latest cheese of the week, I wonder? Stilton. And that reminds me, I just sent the truck out with your delivery. When you return home, you'll find it waiting patiently on your doorstep. Ah, just like Gromit. Oh, you know, Mr. Wallace, there's nothing like coming home to a faithful, loyal cheese. I quite agree. A special order for 62 West Wallaby Street. Stilton. One of my favorites. Oh, yeah, it's mouth-watering. Ooh, did 
Did you hear an unearthly rumbling? Rumbling? What rumbling? Oh, I can't hear properly over your endless prattle. Do me weather ahead, I'm afraid. We are not interested in some fancy pants weather forecast. Oh, I'm interested. Don't you trust them scientists? They can't tell the future. If they could, they'd be rich and have girlfriends and that, wouldn't they? A real man trusts his own senses, and my senses tell me it's a bony day for the beach. It's only for cheese, but give that here. Good heavens. Special orders delivered to 62 West Wallaby Street. You've done the service proud, soldier. Now, stand clear. No time for chitter-chatter. I'm needed in West Wallaby Street. Uh, I guess so. Daisy, there we go. Oh, Paul, all the sun we need. I'd rather put my feet up at home on a day like this. Not interested. I refuse to go out in a thunderstorm. Oh, there's no thunderstorm. You can't hear no thundering, can you? Maybe I can hear thundering. Just put your bagpipes for a moment, will you? My gracious, that's thunder all right, and it's nearly upon us. Oh, but sure it may be thundering, but but did you see lightning? There's no lightning to bother about us, sir. Oh, no, you don't. I'm not going to stay out here with you waiting to be struck by lightning. I'm going to seek shelter, and if you've any sense at all, Duncan McBiscuit, you'll do the same. Good day. What? Oh. What are you looking at, Jimmy? I'll just borrow this. The Riviera, here we come. Great news, Gromit. All the goods have been gathered. Now it's time for some elbow grease, eh? To the cellar. Job done, Gromit. Time to relax on the beach, eh? We deserve a holiday. Just a minute. Such a lovely beach. It's a shame to keep it to ourselves when we could share it with paying customers. Just imagine West Wallaby Street Water World. A genuine beach house, complete with its own all-weather seaside-in-the-cellar basement beach attraction. Oh, oh, we'll be surrounded by happy holiday makers. It'll be grand, Gromit. Honestly, Stay what's the best of time? This man's ruining my blinkered oh. holiday. <laughs> Half am I to take ah, my bucket and spare it? Don't get sand in your home. sandwich. I was only teasing. Just ask that great big pudding Shut there. Up. I ain't no pudding, you These talking dogs are disturbing giant. the peace. Bylaws state that all livestock must Don't be kept talk. under proper control in public places. The fly, and they're not livestock. I want a refund. I want a refund and all. Refunds would indeed appear to be in order, Mr. Wallace. What do you say? Uh, uh, um, well, here at West Wallaby Street Waterworld, Customer satisfaction is our top priority. If you'll just be patient, I promise we'll have everything under control by supper time. Uh... You've got till supper time, no later. No much of an holiday so far, I'm sorry to say. Mm, those mutts are a threat to public stay safety. Stay in my shop and dust a big tin of fruit display. Calling my dears livestock. We can't afford to give refunds, Gromit. 
We've spent all our money doing the house up. This could be a financial disaster. What are we going to do, lad? I never thought we'd have a house full of unhappy holiday makers. Bunch of mooning minis, if you ask me. I'm having a grand old time. Well, that's one satisfied customer anyway. There we are. This customer relationship management isn't so hard, is it, Gromit? There's hope for our little venture yet. You'd best get supper started. Make it a feast to remember. I'll see to our guests. We'll soon have a house full of happy campers, eh, lad? Hard at work, eh, Gromit? That's what I like to see. We'll soon have a house full of happy holiday makers, never fear. Oh, cracking idea, lad. Everyone loves a copper. You'd best attend to your pots and pans, eh? Gangway! Cannonball coming through! Ah, uh, Mr. McBiscuit, may I, uh, have a word? Oh! Uh, later then. Crikey! The infrastructure's getting a lot of wear and tear. Trouble springs eternal, it seems. Very fashionable. Uh, anything I can do for you, Mrs. Gabberly? Oh dear. Oh, what a mess I am. But it's me own fault for letting that mangy McBiscuit get under my skin. Why should I care what he says? As my mum taught me, sticks and stones will break your bones, but silly names can never hurt you. Hey, here comes trouble. Yeah, big fat pudding. <laughs> Big fat pudding? No, oh, it's true enough, I know. It's about a shape for a beach holiday. Perhaps I should just get my refund and go home. Oh, no. That's kind of you, but it's no good. I can't be talked out of a mood like this, can I? Oh, well, I... Uh... I'd go home to Mr. Gavily, but there's no point. Won't get no sympathy from him indoors, will I? A bit of romance. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. I should count me blessings. At least me new outfit. fix. That's something, isn't it? It's a sign. You think so? A sign of things to come. New things that fit. Oh, you're a very good listener, you are, Wallace. Hey, you're in a right mess, you are, Winnie Gabberly, and no mistake. What to do? What to do? There's nothing like a cup of tea. Aye, that's right. A strong cup of cures most ills. Glad you're here, Wallace. It's a sorry old world, isn't it? Thanks to the bullies. Oh, what do I know? I'm going soft in the head, aren't I? Sharp as a knife. Well, now, that's kind of you to say so, Wallace. I'm feeling a bit better now. We happen to may be knocking on. Too old for a beach holiday, that's for sure. Fresh as a daisy. Oh, I don't know about that. But it's ever so kind of you to say so. You know what? Winnie Gabberly's had enough of feeling sorry for herself. So what if I'm a bit like a pudding? I've tangled with giant bees, I have. I can take care of a bullying McBiscuit any day. Thank you, Wallace. You've a right kindly way with words, you have. Uh... 
glad to be of service. I'll be fine now, Pat. Reckon I'll finish my story. Hey! hey there, you big fat! Shut your trap, you tartan tear away, or I'll box your ears! Hmm, I do like a good book. No need for a refund, then. Oh, no. I'm as happy as Larry me. Oh, another happy camper. Not supper time yet, is it, lad? Sorry about that. I'd like a word with you, if you please. Enjoying your stay at West Wallaby Street, Waterworld, Constable? I'm this close to having your establishment shut down. Shut down? You heard me. These dogs are a public nuisance and an health hazard and all. Oh, dear. Went bonkers, they did. And all because I tried to clear away that horrible little toy of theirs. I don't approve of litter, you know. I believe Miss Flit... I warned Felicity Flitter, no. And now she must face the full force of the law. I'm issuing a formal caution for the disruption of lawful quietude. It's the third I've had to write today. The third? Aye, the first two got eaten. Give this one to Miss Flit and tell her to remove her animals or I'll be forced to shut the place down. Oh, I say... Gromit never reacts like that. Watch your fingers. They don't like anyone touching the toy. Gromit won't mind if I borrow this. This needs ironing, it does. Enjoying your holiday, I hope, Major? Oh, yes, absolutely. Dashed comfortable billet you have here. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, we strive to achieve complete customer satisfaction. That wasn't so hard. Put that thing down and pay attention. Oh. I am about to reenact one of the greatest desert battles of history, the Siege of Aqaba. Not many know the tale. It was late 1914, or was it 1916? It was an even year of that, I'm sure. On the one side was a single British soldier, T.E. Lawrence, better known to you civvies as Sir Lawrence of Olivia. On the other, the invading army of the Ottoman Empire, thousands strong. You know the story. Lawrence single-handedly defended a desert fortress from a massive attack. He had only one rifle and no ammunition. He was all alone. Just like this, Lawrence watched the enemy from a secret vantage point sheltered by enormous red boulders. Hmm. Anyway, as the enemy massed, vultures began to circle overhead, crying out in their desperate thirst for blood. Hmm. Not quite historically accurate, I'm afraid. I'll have to start again. Just a moment. May I offer you a spot of tea, Major? Of course. Sharpens the wits. Any interest in this? Perfect. Just like the great boulders of the Akbar Desert. 
You're in luck, my boy. I was just about to reenact the siege of Akaba. You know the story. Sir Lawrence took cover under massive red boulders. Just like this. Vultures circled the sky, crying out for blood. Just like this, our Lawrence, cool as a cabbage, took tea. <laughs> Just like this. Lawrence was taking tea and about to dunk his digestive when suddenly, 10,000 howling Ottoman soldiers charged the fortress. Tea was ruined, obviously. But did Lawrence of Olivier give up? Never! He took his rifle and levered the great red boulders down the dunes, rolling them straight into the enemy horde. With the invaders in disarray, Lawrence, armed only with his bayonet and still desperate for cover, counterattacked. He took them on one by one until he achieved total and complete victory! Dreaming of great battles, no doubt. I'll just tidy this up. Your searchlight is just what West Wallaby Street water world needed, Mr. Paneer. Everything satisfactory, I hope? No, not satisfactory at all. A certain Scottish gentleman has been deconstructing my constructions. Perhaps the management could have a word with him. I'm afraid Mr. McBiscuit is rather difficult to pin down. You've got to do something. If I can't finish my sandcastle, I'll have to insist on a refund. Your castle looks very handsome, Mr. Paneer. Such charming little bucket shapes. I do admire creative artists like yourself. Oh, thank you, Miss Flit. At least someone appreciates art and craft. Look, it's almost done. What do you reckon? Uh, very nice. That's the horrible dungeon where the mean bullying knight is kept locked in chains. I should look in on our other guests. But I'm nearly done. Just one last touch. There. The perfect finishing touch. The mark of finest quality produce. Ye, Miss Flit's going to be impressed. Oh, hi. She'll be ever so impressed, I'm sure. Oh, no. Uh Whoops, my foot slept, silly me. <laughs> my castle, stomped on by a tartan heel. See what I have to put up with? A holiday's not a blinking holiday if I can't finish my sandcastle. Now I have to start all over. Hey, this little fella might enhance your sandcastle. A knight to defend the castle, eh? Why not? It couldn't hurt. Put him where you like. Just one last touch. There. The mark of finest quality produce. I hope Miss Flit likes it. Oh, she'll love it, I'm sure. Oh, no. Uh, oh, my boot, my poor tender boot. It was a blasted sand trap. Oh, 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 oh. Well, then. Should be able to work in peace now, I reckon. Oh, well, you're jolly good. Now for the finishing touch. The defender of the kingdom. However do you manage such lovely creations, Mr. Paneer? It's a knack, Miss Flint. If I hadn't made it into grocer school, I might have been an engineer. But of course, groceries are my first love. Ah, uh, anything else I can assist with? No, thank you, Mr. Wallace. You may consider me a happy camper and most satisfied customer. We do aim to please. Hello, Wallace. Uh, I trust everything at West Wallaby Street Waterworld is to your satisfaction, Miss Flit. We strive to satisfy. It's sweet of you to ask, Mr. Wallace. I'm having a wonderful time. All this drama swirling around me. 
but I remain an oasis of calm in the holy burly of holiday madness. Oh, glad to hear it. I think I'm getting the hang of this. How funny. That sounded just like my little darling's chew toy. Wallace, I've been longing for a new look, and I quite fancy this one. Very incognito, don't you think? My own babies wouldn't recognise me in this ghetto. Uh, I'm afraid fashion isn't really my forte, Miss Flip. Nonsense. What man is immune to the allure of a well-dressed woman? Any interest in this? Thank you, Mr. Wallace. What a lovely scarf. Actually, it's a... Uh... Such vibrant colour and such a pretty pattern. It's perfect for my new look. Isn't it splendid? I have the scarf. I just need the glasses. Would you like these sunglasses? Oh, wonderful, Mr. Wallace. Very stylish. I'll use these for my new look. My new look is complete. Just a moment. You're in for a surprise. Ta-da! What do you think, Wallace? Am I not mysterious? Uh, quite mysterious, yes. <gasps> oh, where's Felicity? Where did Miss Flint go? Uh... Here I am! <laughs> we do have fun, Wallace, don't we? Constable Dibbins has requested... Constable Dibbins is mistaken. Boji Woo and Tinky Wee would never misbehave. They did seem a touch rambunctious. Oh, very well. Let's get this over with. Threatening behaviour towards an officer of the law, that's a serious offence, that is. Don't think I won't lock you up, cos I will. This is your final, final warning. <gasps> oh, you woo! Take it away! How could you behave like this? Mummy is... Very disappointed. Very, very disappointed. And what did you do to upset my precious cupcakes like that? Cupcakes? My darlings, did the bad man upset you? Don't be scared. Mummy's here now. How about a little dressing up game to make it all better? Do you want to play a dress up? Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Oh, come along, my sweets. <sighs> She's lucky I didn't throw those mutts in the kennels. I were this close, I were. You can only push PC Ernest Dibbins so far. I hope your holiday is proceeding in a satisfactory manner, Constable. Satisfactory? Hmm. Yes. Yes, indeed. Everything appears to be quite satisfactory, peaceful and in order. Thank you, Wallace. Champion, we're getting there. Ha-ha! <laughs> At last! A house full of satisfied customers, just as I predicted. I'd best tell Gromit to lay the table. Compliment our host. I've had a cracking holiday. Oh, thank goodness for that. It was a near thing though, wasn't it? Oh, smell those fish and chips. We can look forward to superior chow here in the office of Mayor's one. Mm. 
the tableware doesn't seem to be in breach of any health and safety regulations. Enforcement's the key, of course. You smell like heaven, lassie. Did you buy a new perfume for our date? Oh, really, Duncan? That's just the flower in my hair. And I'm not sure I'd call it a date. Um, uh, before we tuck in, on behalf of the management, that is, Gromit and me, I'd like to welcome you all to our new venture. West Wallaby Street Water World, the only holiday destination with its own all-weather seaside in the cellar basement. I have a few words track. to say myself. Raise your glasses. Raise them, I said. To a great day with a great lass, the sweetest sights I ever smelled. That's right, I'm talking about. Hey, who turned out the. Ah, what's all this? Who's there? Fiber! Lincoln, Nora, this is a wrong Take my last breath. You found me just in time. I've located the victim. Mr. McBiscuit has sustained a nasty knock to the noggin and don't remember now about it. Happily, he will recover. However, aggravated thumping is a serious offence, and I've no choice but to treat every one of you as suspects. Outrageous! <gasps> I never suspects. <coughs> Until our thumper is caught, nobody leaves this house. Nobody comes in and nobody goes out. Not till I know the person who done it. I know who did it. Spies from abroad. Saboteurs from the South Sea. Thank you, Major. That's enough of your dual alley chatter for now. Only cold hard facts can solve this mystery. Solve this mystery? That's right. By the book. You know, uh, burden of innocence and uh, proof of purchase and all that. That's our real investigations. Now, what's that contraption? My latest prototype, Constable. The Deductomatic Mystery Solver. Deductomatic? Is that what's been taking money out of my savings account? Oh, no, Mrs. Gabberley. The deductomatic harnesses unused brain power to solve mysteries. If you're pointing the finger, Wallace, any accusation must be backed up by hard fact and proven according to the law. Well, I... Uh, that is, it should be working. Got it. All right then. Tell us, Wallace, who thumped Duncan McBiscuit? Who done it? Who done it? Oh, that can't be right. We're waiting. Uh, uh, uh just a moment. Any idea who done it, lad? You wouldn't mind pointing him out, would you? It was. Poojie Woo and Tinky Wee. <laughs> Two wee pups laying junk and low. That's daft, that is. Aye, <laughs> silly that. The very idea of accusing my dear doggies. 
How absurd! Ah, quite absurd. <laughs> absurd, <laughs> eh? Nothing is absurd before the law. Here we go. It is the absurd claims the law takes most seriously. For if the absurd cannot expect justice and a fair hearing, then who among us can? He's got a point. We must treat this accusation according to the law. The law requires proof. Proof requires the... Uh, hold on. Proof requires three things. First, the motive. Why did the suspect thump Duncan McBiscuit? Second, the weapon. What was he thumped with? Third, a witness. Who can collaborate, corroborate, uh, back up your accusation? Do you have a motive, a weapon, and a witness, Mr. Wallace? Uh, I'll just recalibrate the inference ometers. There we are. What'll it be? Motive, weapon, or witness? Hmm, where to begin? Cracking! Now we'll know the truth. The truth about what? Uh, the witness. I've identified the witness. Good show. Tell us who witnessed, um, uh, Tinky Woo and Podgy Wee assaulting Mr. McBiscuit. Well, out with it, man. Uh, uh, um, just a moment. Uh, who would you pick for a witness, lad? My witness is Major Crumb. Quite right. I saw him. It was black as pitch. The door cracked open, and I saw him dragging away the body. Short. Hairy fellows with sunken eyes and tattooed necks. Sailors from the South Seas. Spies! Spies from abroad! Not this again. I think we've heard enough. Wait, Major. Did your spies look like them too? Lord heavens! Hang on. No, there is a resemblance, but something's not quite right. That's that, then. Your witness isn't credible. Uh, oh, it was working. All right, that's enough of that. Everyone can go about their normal business. But remember, nobody leaves the house until the mystery is solved. Once I have the deductomatic properly calibrated, this case will be elementary, dear Gromit, elementary. In the meantime, why don't you uh, sniff up some clues for the deductomatic to process, eh, lad? You might start with the constable there. I expect he's got some juicy leads. I've got the suspects right where I want them. Written down on the official constabulary notepad. I'll crack the case with this, I will. It's got to be one of these three, but which one? Do you sense something, boy? Yes, I'll have a little chat with the Major. Perhaps he knows something he doesn't know he knows. And if you don't believe me, I invite you to inspect the evidence. Are you having a laugh? Enough questions. We're wasting time. The spies could be signaling their ship. If they give away our position, we're done for. <sighs> All right. Yes. Fine. So tell me what these so-called spies of yours looked like. Don't mind if I do. It was dark. Dark as... A darkened room. Then the door cracked open, and I saw them. Swarthy little men with sunken eyes and primitive tattoos dragging Duncan's limp body. Sailors, judging by their uniforms, natives of the South Seas, I'd say. Stake my reputation on it. Did they look like this? No, no, no. 
eyes more sunken, with heavy brows. That's better. Add nautical tattoos round their necks, and don't forget the uniform. There we are. A hint more menace. Just a hint now. Yes, now you've got it. Those are the villains I saw. Right, so this is what they look like, eh? Post that picture to every Jack Tar in the Navy. We've got to stop them before they make landfall. That's just what I'll do. The man means well, but he's a couple of bricks short of the full hod. Checking provisions, eh? Good military planning. Who knows how long that fool of a civilian constable will keep us cooped up? Best start rationing now, before panic sets in and we have to eat our pack animals. For each other. Good to see you, Private. Watch your hindquarters, Private. There are spies about. Saw so myself dragging off that Duncan chap. Not a pretty picture. You shouldn't eat candy floss, Mr. Panea. Bad for your teeth. Oh, I'm not eating it. I just like having something to hold. You must try to stop worrying so. What? The thumper? Who knows where he'll strike next? I don't think there is a thumper. I think Duncan just fell over and wandered off by himself. He's a clumsy oaf, you know. Aye, he is heavy on his feet, that's for sure. He'll bounce back. He always does. It's Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee I'm worried about. Those silly accusations hurt their feelings. I just hope playing dress-up will lift their spirits. A new look is a tonic for the soul, don't you find? Fred, I don't know how to play dressing up games as it happens. Doggy dress up, silly. I just need to pick the right outfits. Oh, so many to choose from. Ah, oh, it's only you, Gromit. For a moment I thought, uh, well, never mind. I'm sorry, lad, but if you want some candy floss, you'll have to get your own. I'm rather attached to mine. Mr. Gabble is news agent. Now open for business. Is that a customer I am? Oi, you want to shop here? You gotta follow my rules. Dear, take what you like and I'll put it on slate. Business will sort out payment later. Got that? Oi, don't nick nothing while you're about it. Blimey. That were easy. I don't know why Winnie makes so much fuss. Come back soon! Took quite a thumping, didn't he? Can't say he didn't deserve it. Still can't leave him to rot all on his lonesome. Someone's got to tend to the great lug. Oh. He's coming round. Oh, 
hurt my head. Somebody stop the spinning. There's a whirlpool I'm in. Joel Frat Patch, you've had a nasty knock. Did you see who thumped you? No, but I can almost remember what hit me. The terrible weapon that laid me low, it... You saw the weapon, what hit you? I, I think so. It was... Oh, I can't remember a thing. My brain's been boggled. Ooh, you've got amnesia, you have. Amnesia? Oh, no, that as well as a bang to the head. Is it fatal? Just take things step by step, Chuck. What's the last thing you can remember? Well, I was upstairs getting set for a jump junior on slide, but something wasn't right. Them little dogs of Felicity's were underfoot and they wouldn't have shut their yaps. Duncan McBiscuit doesn't take guff from yapping wee dugs, so I grabbed that bone toy of theirs and took it away. They didn't like it one bit. Oh, no. Best part was, when I squeezed the wee toy, it drove them crazy because it made this noise. This noise. Oh, what was that noise? I cannot recall. My brain's turned to haggis. Don't fret, Pat. Just rest. It'll come back to you. <laughs> That's it. The sound of the toy. Now I remember. Go on. Then what happened? Oh, I kept the toy and shut the wee doggies doing the slide. They didn't like that one bit neither. <laughs> I was having a grand time. I wanted a wee picky to remember by, so I went down to that photo thingamajig. I struck a manly pose and I was... I was... Uh, oh, Crivens, it's all fading away. I'll be forgetting my own name next. Oh, don't get yourself in a twist, love. It'll come back to you. That's right. I remember. Go on. I was taking a picky, holding a stick of candy floss. Oh, I love that stuff, me. I got my hunger up. Just then, like an answer to my prayers, the gong sounded for supper. I came to table, and there I found heaven, my lovely lass, Felicity. I remember the fine, sweet smell of her, like... She smelled like... Um, Oh, blast it all. My nose is a blank. I cannot recall. Give it time, love. You'll remember. That's it. The sweet scent of felicity. How could I forget? I remember. I remember everything now. I'm cured. You've cured my ham knees. You cured me and... and... I were a right numpty with you, weren't I? Still are, I reckon, but don't go weepy on me now. Tell me what happened after you sat down to supper. I was making a toast when the lights went it. My eyes were adjusting to the dark when... Thump! <gasps> who thumped you? Oh, I never saw who, but I saw what. The supper gong mallet! That's what hit me! The supper gong mallet? You sure, Chuck? Sure? Oh, aye. Look. Look what it did to me. Ooh. Hey, that's a crime, that is. No wonder your mind's been a blank. What kind of person would do that? They should be locked up. You go back to sleep now, love. Get some rest. That's an extra fluffy batch. Can't do any harm to trade up. Just this once. 
Oh, crikey, it's heavy. Must be family-sized floss. Hello there, Gromit. Would you like to play a doggy dress-up? Oh, oh, you found it. Good boy. Now, Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee can play sailor again. Oh, what a nice present. That's a stylish look. I do admire those sunglasses. I suppose they're back in fashion. Seems I'm something of a trendsetter. Ah, Gromit, you must know what the debonair dog likes. Why don't you help me pick an outfit for my precious darlings? Use your doggy fashion sense and choose your favourite hat, glasses and collar. Aye, aye, Captain. For very latest, jaunty. Hoochie Woo and Tinky Wee will love this. Hoochie Woo, Tinky Wee. Time for dress up, my dears. Oh, look at this. Hello. You found Mr. Squeaky, you clever things. I was afraid he'd never turn up. Now we're really ready for some fun, aren't we? Let's get dressed up. The poor things are shy. Would you mind leaving us alone for just a little while? These suspects know Summit, but who to question first? If I keep staring long enough, I'm sure I'll detect Summit eventually. Caught a scent, have you? Hmm, his motive is clear enough. But could this apparently gentle purveyor of fine groceries be a Jekyll and Hyde character, perhaps? A vicious thumper in disguise? I must interrogate him. Put that candy floss down while I'm interviewing you, if you please. <laughs> I'll ask you again, and this time I want a straight answer. Did you, or did you not, thump Duncan McBiscuit? Did you not? I mean, you did not. Uh, that is to say, me, not you. I mean, I mean, not you, me. But not me. I didn't, did you? That's not right. Uh, what was shall I? it be? You're not me, and I did you not. Uh, so you didn't do it. All right, that's enough. Just you watch yourself, Mr. Paneer, or I'll be watching you. Got it? Not another word. Phew. What happened to my little friend and protector? I'll have to spin up another. You can do this, Ernest Dibbins. What is it, boy? Hmm. She clearly had a motive, and perhaps under that soft, knitted exterior lurks the soul of a hardened thumper. I must question her. Uh, 
But you do admit you had a motive. He happened to did, and I could have thumped him, buried him, and drummed him twice over since I've been down here. None of you lot seems worried about that, though. That can't be everywhere, Miss Gabberly. Not with so many suspects to interview. More important than tending the victim of the crime, is it? Look here. I can't stand around chatting all day. I have a thumper to catch. See that you don't leave the house. I've got it! You sure this time, Mr. Wallace? I'll summon the suspects. Right. You have accused Felicity's diminutive dogs of thumping Duncan McBiscuit. To prove it, you need a motive, a weapon, and a witness. Where do you want to start? Right. That's the one. What's the one? Uh, motive. I've solved the motive. Excellent. Tell us why uh, Wadgy Podge and Tinky Pink thumped Duncan McBiscuit. Well, out with it, man. Uh, uh, um, just a moment. Can you spare a motive, lad? I if you've got one, give it here. The motive is... This chew toy. Really? The pups are very attached to that toy. I know from bitter experience. Of course they are. Mr. Squeaky was a present from their mumsy. That doesn't make it a motive for hurting Duncan, though. Oh, yes, it does. Duncan stole the toy from them doggies. Told me so himself. He never did. Oh, he did. If Mr. McBiscuit did indeed take their favourite toy, that could well be a motive for thumping. But why would Duncan want to take Mr. Squeaky? The very idea is ridiculous. Ridiculous? Possibly. But on the balance of probabilities, spot on. I believe this motive meets the test of the law. You're on the way to proving your case, Wallace. We know the motive. What's next? Of course. Now we'll get the facts. Get what facts? Uh, the weapon. I've determined the weapon. Well done. Tell us what, um, what you podge in Winky T used to thump Duncan. Well, out with it, man. Uh, uh, um, just a moment. Do you have anything resembling a weapon, lad? I could use one sharpish. The weapon is this mallet. Eee, you bang on the money this time, Wallace. I remember now. That's what it Duncan all read. He said so himself, and he's got the dent in his bonds to prove it. It all makes sense now. That's a maladjusted mallet, all right. Maladjusted? What makes you say that? Well, it looked all fluffy and pink and delicious. But underneath it were rock hard and not very tasty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Finnear. It appears that the mallet is indeed our weapon. Well done, Wallace. The case against uh, them two dogs is coming together. The only piece of the puzzle left is the witness. And the witness is... You've been Major Crum another go, are you? Oh, uh, yes. My witness is Major Crum. Quite right. I saw him. It was black as pitch. The door cracked open, and I saw him dragging away the body. Short, hairy fellows with sunken eyes and tattooed necks. Sailors from the South Seas. Spies, spies from abroad. Not this again. I think we've heard enough. Wait, Major. 
Did your spies look like them too? Good heavens! That's them, all right. I'd yes. recognize them anywhere. Put those spies in irons. Don't be silly. They're puppies. Dogs of war, more like. What war? Oh, there is no war. What? All right, let's let sleeping dogs lie, shall we? The main point is, the Major saw these two dragging away Mr. McBiscuit. Isn't that right, Major? It most certainly is. In that case, according to the law, he is a legitimate witness. Wallace, you've shown us motive, weapon, and witness. And according to the powers vested in me as an officer of the law, I now pronounce the case solved. Duncan McBiscuit was thumped by a mallet because of a stolen chew toy, the crime being witnessed by Major Crumb. The perpetrators of this evil deed were none other than the canine criminals Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee. No, it can't be. My darlings are precious, kind, insu winsu doggies, not hooligan hounds. I knew it. Wallace knew it. Put them in chains. Throw away the key. Batten down the hatches. Cabin doors to manual. All in a day's detective work. created a bit of a current. Help, Gromit, I've got that sinking feeling. We're all going down the drain. Above. They followed their toy down the drain. Well, I'll give them one thing. They're dogged to the end. Welcome aboard, lad. Just a short jump to dry land, eh? No, no, drum it. I'm about to be flushed. Do something. Don't do it, lad. You blow yourself to smithereens. Gotcha! Thank heavens, we've made it, Gromit. We're back on dry land. That's one you owe me, pal. Um, I do hope everyone's had an unforgettable holiday and that you'll consider visiting West Wallaby Street Waterworld again next year.
Romit, where are you, lad? We've got quite a clean-up job in front of us. No time for dawdling. Romit, Romit. Should do it, lad. Our brand new Infini flavor ice cream makers ready for business. Patent pending, of course. Its infrared taste analyzer can sample any flavor and turn it into a delicious ice cream. What do you say, Gromit? Fancy pushing the button on our inaugural batch? Wensleydale cream, anyone? Get it churn, lad. Just in time to be road tested in front of paying customers at the fair this weekend. And all in a good cause, hmm? Miss Blitz says it's to raise money to rebuild the dog shelter. The poor pups have been homeless for too long. Imagine if you had no place to call home sweet kennel from it. Hmm, must be the breeze. Miss Flit says the strays have been making mischief all over town. On Tuesday, Mrs. Gabbley's shop was terrorized by a gang of terriers. No doubt they'll come to heel once they've a proper roof over their heads. I'm sure everyone will give generously at the fair to build them a new home. I can't be the only dog lover in town. Nora Gromit, wild dogs, stray scoundrels, mangy good-for-nothing mongrels mangling me machine. They must be some of the escapees. Oh no, me crank. Me lever. The flavor engraver, the brains of our custom flavor scanner lad, it's been scrambled. The four-legged beans. I'm sorry, lad, but this is some serious damage. I suppose it's nothing that can't be fixed. I'll tinker with the flavor engraver if you track down our filched crank and our lifted lever. And this cute one's going to need to be calmed down as well. Mind you, it'll take a month of ice cream sundaes to put things right if I can't patch things up. You've got to get them in order if we're going to have the Infini flavor ready for the fair this weekend. Come on, lad, you're a dog. You can reason with them. All that hard work fouled up by a few rogue whippets. Oh, Gromit. This machine might not be completely cream crackered after all. Let's have a shifty. Afraid it's still a bit uh, discombobulated, lad. <laughs> Your old toy certainly did the trick, didn't it, lad? Oh, my, you used to be so attached to it. Took quite a spell to wean you off it, in fact. Now we can focus on getting this machine up and running. He swiped it again. What's he got there, lad? I think he's helped himself to our valuables. I wonder if that dog's part of a canine crime ring. 
He's only got a taste for the expensive stuff. Not quite done painting the sign yet, Gromit. That's a nice shade of blue, though, wouldn't you say? I hear they're starting to advertise the fair in town. Oh, I'd love to go down there and have a look. Careful, Gromit. The Infini Flavor motor is volatile without its crank. Mr. Wallace, Miss Fit from next door here. For the last 45 minutes, I've been trying to read the same page in my book, only to be interrupted by the incessant clatter that seems to be emanating from your cellar. I quite understand that an inventor is entitled to do his inventing in the privacy of his own home, but the banging, popping, creaking and odd explosions really must stop. What's that livestock? Honestly, Wallace, this has always been a respectable street. out. This mangy whippet is, is ravaging my roses. Came hurtling out of your master's house with some sort of bone in its mouth. Hmm. Feeding the strays really is the last straw. Now he's gone underground and Lord knows what he's doing to my roots. And where's Wallace when I need him? Are there no real men left in this world to protect a woman's property? Don't just stand there. Do something. You're a dog. Can't you reason with him? That's where the dastardly digger went underground. Look at my petunias. Pulverized. Thank heavens the rascal didn't tear up my tulips. I don't know how I'd have coped. I was just about to dig a little home for that one before your friend came running into my garden. Morning, private. At ease, private, at ease. I'm sure by now you've received intelligence about the morale-raising ops this weekend. Should be a jolly old time. Like when Ensa used to come and rouse the troops, reminded the squaddies what they were fighting for. I remember being stationed in Algeria, and the association organized a whole day of fanfare. Unbelievable! There was Fatima the Snake Charmer, the ever-popular monkey toss competition, even a couscous eating contest. Which reminds me, I expect you to be at the fair when I display my digestive prowess. <laughs> the pie eating contest, Private. You must have seen the sign-up sheet in town. Nobody will challenge the great major, though. I shall be uncontested. They don't call me Cool Hand Crumb for nothing, you know. Those are my biscuits, Private. And very delicious they are, too. Can't share them with you, though. For optimal nutritional efficiency, today's soldiers must stick to their rations. So, no picky wickies for you, I'm afraid. Oh, tremendous flavor. A 
Hello, Gromit lad. How's Mr. Wallace? Have you heard about the fundraiser? I've never been to a proper town fair before. Oh, this should be grand. Hope to be seeing you and Mr. Wallace. Oh, morning, pet. Out for walkies. Certainly a grand day for it. Anything I can do for you? Town's a buzz with the fundraiser this weekend, isn't it? About time somebody did something to build a new dog shelter. Ooh, I've had run-ins with all sorts of strays of late. Terriers, spaniels, mutts, even an Irish wolfhound. Should have seen the size of him when he went for me pork scratchings on top shelf. Sent me tumbling backwards and brought me awning crashing down. Ooh, I gave him what for and no mistake. Ah, uh, you mean you opened your gob, and poor brute took fright. Oh, mind your business and quit interrupting. This is why you haven't got any friends and spend all day talking to the birds. <laughs> I'm just in need of some intelligent company. Anyway, it's high time town got together to put the shelter back up. Wouldn't you say, Chuck? I'm glad summit is finally being done to get these dogs off the streets. A proper fundraiser. Ooh, I love the fair. Fried treats, all sorts of sweets. I can't get enough. <laughs> That's for certain. Ooh, you. Hello, hello. Looking forward to this weekend's fair. Should be a riot. And all for a good cause to boot. there. What you got there, Chuck? A pie-eating contest. Well, isn't that festive? Me? Oh, I don't know about that. I, I do love the odd meat pie, but a scoffing contest? That wouldn't be ladylike, would it? <laughs> You've trouble enough appearing ladylike. Without a meat pie in your gob. Oh, do I? Tell that to Postman. He seemed quite taken with me this morning. It's only because he's got an eye defect. Oh, sure up, you curmudgeonly codger. You know what, Chuck? I will sign up for the contest. I think it's a splendid idea. And I plan on winning in a most ladylike fashion, naturally. Let's see. Oh, just me and the Major, is it? Hmm. He's no match for Winnie Gabberly. There you go, Gromit. I expect you to attend my victory party. Ah, yes, the pie-eating contest. Nobody's signed up yet to take on the mighty Major Crumb. Pity. I'd love to meet another man. Toe to toe on the field of battle, mano a mano, feasting to the death until the best man wins. Edwina? She thinks she can out-eat the likes of me? Ho, ho, ho! That's a good one, Private. I'd love to see her staring down the barrel of a ketchup bottle. There's just no way she can win. Impossible. She could never. <laughs> These blinking biscuits. I've been munching on them all day. They're going to fill me up. Private! Attention! Get rid of these vile things! I've got to prepare for battle! My guts must be ready for all the pie I can throw at them if I'm going to crush that woman. She's challenged the wrong man! Battle stations! Bye. 
back, are you? I hope you've a plan to get your little friend out of my garden. Poojie Woo and Tinky Wee may have their mischievous moments, but they knew better than to rummage in my roses. Oh, what I wouldn't give for a man of action around here. Good heavens, Gromit! Now you're just rewarding him for foul behaviour. little rascal and with little damage now be sure it never happens again i don't want to see any more of your canine companions on my property do you understand I hear they're starting to advertise the fair in town. Oh, I'd love to go down there and have a look. I suppose that lever does look a bit like an old bone, doesn't it? No wonder the crafty canine went and buried it. Give a dog a bone and into the ground it goes. It's their nature. Oh no. Did our fastening nut go missing? It holds the lever in place. It's a critical part of the apparatus, Gromit. Well, this is no good, lad. That was my last number 12. What rotten luck. Hmm? Look at that! He found our nut! Fantastic, Gromit! Eh? Uh, perhaps I was a bit hard on him before. I didn't know the little one had a penchant for tinkering. Oh, he's just afraid. Heavens above, he's a positively petrified pooch. Poor little lad, we ought to call him Twitch. And there we have it, lad. Uncrossed a few cross wires and our flavour engraver is as good as new. Now we ought to be back in business. Off we go, lads. Nothing can stop our Infini flavour ice cream from taking off now. Hmm? Bit late for the post, eh? Oh, hello there. Uh, can I help you? Oh, good heavens, no. The question is rather, how can I help you? Name's Muzzle. Monty Muzzle. Philatelist, philosopher, philanthropist, and purveyor of fairground amusement. I hope by now you've heard about Monty Muzzle's Save the Dogs fundraiser fair to be held this weekend. Oh, uh, yes, we have. Uh, Gromit and I were just... Uh... Oh, glad to hear it. I was deeply saddened to hear of your recent tragedy, and I'm making it my duty as a dedicated and devoted dog lover to help you all raise the necessary funds to repair your canine shelter. Imagine all those precious animals out on the streets. A tragedy. What a shame for all those dogs. But Gromit and I might have the perfect contribution for the fair. We were just putting the finishing touches on our patent-pending Infini Flavor ice cream machine. Ice cream, you say? Ooh, who doesn't love ice cream? The creamy coldness, the satisfying sweetness, the profit margins. 
And our, our machine has custom flavor technology. Mm. Its flavor scanner extracts taste molecules from any sample provided. We're able to make limitless varieties to suit any customer. My, that does sound impressive. Oh, by heck, Mr. Walrus. I know a good money-making opportunity when I smell it. What do you say to this? With my financial firepower and your unique ice cream maker, we could put an Infini Flavor retail outlet on every beachfront from Blackpool to Bognor Regis. The world will be your Knickerbocker glory. Franchising. Do you hear that, lad? We could be ice cream barons. If you bring your invention to the fair and manage to make a hefty contribution for this most needed, um, uh, uh, oh yeah, dog shelter. It's a deal. Gromit and I couldn't be more excited. Oh, our in-house creamery assures us peak freshness. Speaking of the dogs, Gromit and I have come across three little lads who need new lodgings. Well, look at that. Aren't they the most precious things you've ever seen? My charity begins now, and I've got the perfect home for them. Yes, quick-looking devils, too. Well, I won't take up any more of your time, Mr. Willard. Walk is. Come on, you. Your new home awaits. Off they go, lad. Uh, say goodbye. Be seeing you and your contraption at the fair, Mr. Wallace, and uh, be sure to bring your wallet. Roll up, roll up, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Monty Muzzle's Fundraise Affair. It fair warms my heart to see so many charitable souls here today. So let me warm yours by selling you a handful of tickets available for a nominal fee, the proceeds of which will put a smile on the face of a homeless and abandoned puppy. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, them tickets is good for every attraction. You can fry your favorite food, take on a chicken in a game of wits, or ride the mighty muzzler. Every penny goes to charity, every ticket, in short, will wag a tail. I say, Gromit, isn't this a thrill and such a noble cause, rebuilding a shelter for your canine companions? Oh, your new chum must have dropped his toy in excitement. I bet the little fella's having a grand day out, probably never been to a fair before. Hey, that must be the remains of one of the flies that was blowing around this morning. Can't abide litter, so I tore it up and offered it as slips of paper to the Pontus. Here are some tickets, lad. Go and find your friends and have some fun. <laughs> have a pie to enter, do you? Give it here, and I'll get to it in due time. Quite the turnout of entries I've got. Bound to find a master of ceremonies in here somewhere. Strawberry rhubarb with cream. Uh, not a terrible texture, but a horrendous pie. Oh, good. Strawberry rhubarb reminds me of me Auntie Mildred. What an horrible old shrew she was, always force-feeding me with her horrid confectionery disasters. Oh, good heavens. What rotten memories. What do we have here? Oh, yes. Apple crisp a la mode. An old standard. Stench alone wants to make me wretch. Of course, me old dad, on the odd occasions he was home, would always demand an apple crisp. Reminds me of the manky old devil's musk. 
couldn't get far enough away from him, if you must know. May he rot in peace. Was that kidney pie? Just like the swill they used to feed us during my national service. Bike, those were terrible times. Just like me days in the RAF. Biggest thrill I've had in years! <laughs> <laughs> Gromit, enjoying the fair? Must be easy to enjoy such simple pleasures when you're a dog, not knowing the pain of unrequited love. You just wander through life, sniffing and scratching your way to happiness, while I must endure the loneliness of living without a man worthy of my hand. But then there is Mr. Muzzle, raising all of those funds for our poor, homeless pups. I've never seen such altruism in all my years. He may be of meagre means himself, but he's rich in other ways. Oh, and what a handsome partner he'd make. Certainly compared to the rest of the town's buffoons. Are there no real men here worthy of the name? I want someone strong, brilliant and brave to lavish me with praise. For instance, I had my hair done this morning, and did anyone notice? Not one of them. I'm sure Mr. Muzzle would have, had he not been so busy. But what does a woman have to do to attract attention? 1400, 1500, 1500, 16. Hmm. Let's see. Count this row across. Assume that the jar is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Hmm. Can't be certain. There's a pie baking contest. I'm sure a display of your culinary skills would wow the judges. You can always trot off home for a spell to whip up an entry. I'm sure your friends won't mind. I've been writing down line after line to try to finish my poem. 
Luckily, your owner had this useless bit of onion skin where I could gather my thoughts. One stroke of brilliance is all it will take to transform her into a hen's loving honey. Don't leave your fate to chance. By invoke. All right, yeah, create a clairvoyant codfish. Let's see what you have to say. Cravens, what a bunch of rubbish! Let's see if this fortune's got anything useful for my poem. Your hair could be mistaken for pirate's gold. Ah, that's no half bad, that is. I just work. I'm a blinking genius, I am! No need for these rotten lines! I've got a perfect one right here! Hello there, Felicity. Oh, hello, Duncan. You look ravishing today. Why, thank you, Duncan. In fact, I've written you a poem in honour of your astounding beauty. What? You've written a poem? Every last word. Really? Well, let's hear it then. <clears throat> Dearest Felicity, your eyes are as deep as the murkiest loch. Your teeth are as straight as Blackpool rock. Your haunches are sturdy, your bearing is bold, and your hair could be mistaken for pirate's gold. I, I don't know what to say. Brilliant, eh? Just my hair! I did. Oh, Duncan, who could have guessed you're so sensitive and attentive to detail? Aye, my rugged Highland handsomeness may fool some, but inside I'm nothing more than a caring and loving lamb. Come here, my little sugar plum fairy. been rolling around in the barnyard too long if my nose isn't mistaken. Oh, that's just my unique musk. Let's go down and stare longingly into each other's eyes. She goes, you! Ah, the missus says I need more mates, does she? <laughs> well, I've got the birds in the sky and bugs on the sill to keep me company. You won't find me making up numbers at some flipping fair. Good, because you're not invited. Here, birdie, come to Papa Gabberly. Looks like the fair's in full swing. I'll be popping over later to take part in the big contest. I'll have the Major quaking in his boots, I will.
think a little teamwork is against the rules, eh? Here, yeah, you have a go. No getting in there to count them, that's for sure. I've already tried, and Mr. Muzzle weren't none too happy. That seemed like it could almost be right, Gromit. Cross your toes, lad. These are the last of the tickets. Congratulations. You are the winner of a grand and fantabulous prize. I heck, we did it. Fantastic. We've won, Gromit. Congratulations, sir. Very well done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Muzzle. Quite a bit of brain power it did. So, what's the grand and fantabulous prize then, Mr. Mosel? You say I can't wait to see what I've won. Yes, well, um, yeah, just as it's always better to give than receive, um, I say the satisfaction of your triumph, plus our undying gratitude for the charitable donation you've made towards our noble cause, our prizes in and of and... Um, by themselves, wouldn't you say, Mr. Panier? Chuck. Well, they're uh, all very well, but I thought... Prizes that last a lifetime. Up here, and in here. But, but, but what the sign says... Oh, quit bellyache in your big girl's blouse. <laughs> oh, um, it's hardly fitting for a gentleman such as yourself. Here, have a blinking bubble gum ball. But, but... Oh, all right. And one for the mutt as well. Know the events for charity, but I spent all of my tickets for this one gloomy ball of bubblegum. think that would taste very good, would it, lad? I mean, fish-flavored ice cream? Who ever heard of such a thing? Unless you, uh, haven't made a new feline friend, have you, perchance? Oh, well, uh, yes, then. Uh, one fish-flavored ice cream coming up. Uh, step to it, lad. This doesn't look immediately disgusting. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, there, there is uh, something here that isn't immediately foul. A faint hint of a taste of something that sparks, uh, dare I say, a not totally unpleasant memory. It's the unmistakable taste of mushy potato, which in and of itself, is delicate and unique. Hmm. Yeah, well, it's not quite there yet. So, take it back, and perhaps you can improve. Although, as a mere canine pie maker, I imagine that was no doubt your best attempt. <laughs> An accident, perhaps. And also, oh, no cream. 
no a la mode even. Uh, clearly not a serious entry after all. Crust. My, 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 oh, could it be? Oh, mm -hmm. oh, yes, this is more like it. What a belter this one is. Oh, a crisp outside with a warm potato inside. Oh, this takes me back to my days as a boy. But, but it, it, it's still missing something. Some key flavour from it past. Now, still, I'll, I'll hold on to your entry as provisional for now. If you think of something to give it that definitive je ne sais what, uh, come back and I'll consider it. Uh, till then, the competition's still open. Ah, a new addition to your shocking previous entry. I have no doubt that you almost certainly cheated, but without actual proof. I'll have to let that pass. Let's see how you did. Why, uh, this is, uh, yes, yes, resplendent. I've never tasted a pie quite like this. A savoury crust, enhanced by a one-of-a-kind flavour, if I am not mistaken, of lightly battered cod. Oh, yes. Your entry triggers deep, unhappy memories. Oh, I can see myself as a slip of a lad behind the counter in my mother's chippy. I'm the happiest lad there's ever been, eating complimentary portions of freshly fried North Sea cod and chips. Stupendous! How you did it, dog, I'll never know. But you've won. Congratulations. You're the first beast to become the master of ceremonies of the pie-eating contest. I'll be meeting you on stage then. Time to get this pie-eating contest underway. Gather round, ladies and gentlemen, gather round. Our first order of business is to celebrate this fine figure of a dog as winner of the pie-baking contest. That's a boy, Chuck. I knew you could do it. Hey! <laughs> and to honor this achievement, Fido here will preside as master of ceremonies of the pie-eating contest to commence shortly. I'm here! The Major doesn't stand a chance. Ha! I once ate a kidney pie the size of a Shetland pony, and I had room for dessert and coffee. Your starter's pistol, doggo. And now, I'd just like to say a few words. Where are me blinking notes? Mm, you were up here just a minute ago. Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, um... It's not every day that tragedy strikes a helpless town like this. But I'm most honored to be here in your moment of need to help you all collect enough funds to rebuild the orphanage. And uh, that is uh, the orphanage for lost dogs. And I'm delighted to say that I haven't seen such an outpouring of charitable giving among fairgoers since, well, since, uh, uh, since uh, the great Lancashire earthquake of, uh, oh, let me see now, uh, some, uh, yes, some years ago. 
I don't remember hearing about that. Ah, oh, dreadful it was. Teapots tossed from their cozies. Sheep shaken right out of their fleeces. Most dreadful indeed. So, keep up the good work here today and be sure to spend, spend, spend as our wonderful attractions as it's all in such a very, very good cause. Now, without further ado, uh, Colonel Crumbs and uh, Mrs. Gobbledygook uh, will go head to head in the pie eating contest. Now, Mutt, pull the trigger. It's been a busy week. Just one good deed after another. First, I takes in three homeless hounds. Then I helps a town. Do gooders cough up the cash for a noble cause. <laughs> yeah. And now I've trapped me a tricksy little trespasser. Now listen here, mutt. I built this fair up from the sweat of me brow and a pile of scrap. And if you think I'm going to let a molly-coddled mongrel chuck a spanner in the works, you don't know Monty Muzzle. Aye, your time on wheel comes soon enough. And being man's best friend, you wouldn't want to stop the ride and disappoint your punters now, would you? But until it's your turn, you can blinking well stay put. Oh, and don't start whining and yelping for help. You'll have my security system to deal with if you don't keep the noise down. What's going on here? What's all the racket about? Oh, another blinking dead dog. The workshire whelp hadn't even been for walkies yet. <laughs> Pity. Ah, oh, get off me, you filthy beast. Oh, oh. That'll be an extra few hours pulling duty for you. No more out of you.
bloody muzzle! Your blinking ride's not fit for service! Blinking engine must have, uh, um, <laughs> died again. Ah, there we go. Hello, Twitch. Uh, Gromit was looking for you. Enjoying the fair? Oh, I see. You'd like to have a go on the ride? Well, I don't know. Where the heck's Gromit? He should be showing you around. Uh, no? Well, uh, I suppose I can take a break. Let's go. I don't know if they let dogs on board, Twitch. Steady on. I know it's not fair, Twitch, but we can always ask. E easy there, boy. I've got quite a bit of strength for a little fella. Blinking Mora. You mean poor Gromit's inside the ride? What happened, lad? Monty Muzzle? Heavens above. Uh, Twitch, you better stay out of sight. I've got to see about getting Mr. Muzzle to shut down his ride. The contest hasn't ended yet. Why, no, it's a last man... <clears throat> ...woman standing competition. Oh, who's winning? <clears throat> As if you had to ask, man. <laughs> by my count, the current leader by a thick cross is... Mrs. Gabalee. Hogwash! Woohoo! Mmm! And I'm relishing every bite! Ah, I'm just getting warmed up! We'll see about that. Mr. Wallace, would you mind bringing Paneer this slip of paper here when you've a moment? Right, oh. Oh, yes, everything seems to be in order here. Nothing to report. Woohoo! That blooming Bobby. Been up there for an hour or more and won't get off. He says he's carrying out an inspection, but he won't find anything untoward on any of my rides. Everything's above board here. Oh, uh, 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 of course. And what's that supposed to mean? No, oh, uh, nothing. Your rides had a spot of mechanical trouble, I see. Oh, no, no, that, 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 that's nothing. Um, purely cosmetic. Um, the, uh, um, <laughs> Inner mechanics still run like clockwork. Oh. Had to institute a weight limit, though. Uh, don't want any heavy hands bringing things to a halt. No, of course not. Your duty is as neglected as an abandoned puppy. Oh, I've never abandoned from it. Your hair could be mistaken for pirate's gold. Oh, well, uh, perhaps this one isn't for me. Your home smells of a patch of mold. Oh, we've the odd bit, I know, but it's not that bad. A, a balloon, always uh, good for a lift. Would-be chomping champion continues to shovel pie down his gullet. But the Major seems to have met his match in Vinny, the Wonder Nosher. Oh, yeah, look at these. Uh, a note, Mr. Paneer. Your duty is as neglected as an abandoned puppy. Hmm, that's odd. 
Stop the ride! That's enough. Suppose I'd better get back to the station. Duty calls. Uh, a note, Mr. Panea. Your hair could be mistaken for pilot's gold. But, Duncan, isn't that the last line of your poem? The one you wrote specially for me? Why, uh, yes, my dear. Its greatness is such that uh, it's already been quoted. The poem you wrote each and every line of? Why, uh, yes, of course. How odd. And that little pick-me-up comes courtesy of Monte Mussel's fortune-telling machine, generously shared by Mr. Wallace. A fortune? Yes? Honeycakes? I can explain. Explain nothing. It's plagiarism, lies, deceit. I'm through with you, Duncan McBiscuit. Ferocity, my wee North Country man. I wrote all those other lines, especially that one about your haunches. Excuse me, Penny. Mrs. Dabbley wanted me to give you this. Ah, must be a message to read out for the fair. <clears throat> Testing, one, two, one, two. All fairgoers are cordially invited to attend Mrs. Vinnie Gabberley's victory celebrations to be held later this evening at the Gabberley residence. Uh, that's everyone including Major Crom, so long as he's humbled by defeat and pie fatigue. A scandalous suggestion. You'll regret the day you taunted a crumb. The rest of me finished pies. The rest? But my stomach told me I'd got through more than just these appetizers here. And Major Crumb has just learned that Mrs. Gabberley is in the lead by a most devastating pie margin. Oh, not feeling too tickety-boo right now. I... I think I might have been outpied by the enemy. And it seems the Major might be giving up, though he's only nine pies behind. Nine? That's it. I capitulate. I surrender. Hoist the white napkin of chronic pie fatigue. Yippee! And down goes the Major, out for the count. Atta boy, Mrs. Gabberley, congratulations! Remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you like pies, Paneer's Purveyors of Peculiar Produce is open daily for all of your baking and pie-eating needs. I can't believe she beat me. I'll never be able to show my face in the officer's mess again. Never mind, Major Crumb. You guzzled gamely. Perhaps you just bit off a bit more than you could chew. Perhaps. A man must know his limits. <sighs> the only thing that can lift my spirits now is a spin on that RAF ride, if you'll excuse me. Oh, I must have put on five stones. And remember, whether you want pakora, pies, puddings, or pomegranates, they're all available at Panier's Peculiar Produce, just two minutes' walk from this fairground. Too heavy? Balderdash! I was only on her this morning. Oh, just over our limit, I'm afraid, Corporal Crumb. You must have piled on pounds since then. Yeah. Lincoln contest, and I'm a major, don't you know? Aye, a major liability. So, you're banned, for safety's sake. Perhaps go for a jog or summit, and work off some of that extra weight. A balloon, Major Crumb? Who doesn't love a festive balloon? Used to tie the old balloon to our knapsacks when we were in the long grass to distinguish ourselves from the enemy. Uh... Perhaps you're ready for the ride now. You might be right. I'm feeling lighter on my feet already. Oh. Weight limit passed. All aboard. Wahoo! Tucked away! Cabin door to manual. Ready for takeoff. 
Blam! Yeah! Good heaven! Major Crumb's carrying too much excess baggage. The ride's going to burst in seams. We've been hit. Oh, my giddy ants. Oh, my. Those poor dogs were trapped inside of that dreadful machine the Rob entire it. time. Rob it. Are you all right, lad? Where is that monster, Monty Muscle? He was just here a moment ago. Up, up and away. Hi. what are you doing? What is that? It's Monty Muscle. And our money. And Twitch. Arrivederci. Monty Muzzle stock is on the rise. This is no time to jettison the cream, Gromit. We don't do floats. What'll it be, lad? One scoop or two? Oh, good show, Muzzle, old chap. Not exactly what I planned, but a clean escape, nevertheless. A few quid and one unexpected runt richer. What do you say, boys? Think we can find work for this emaciated mongrel? That's what I thought. Oh, Knickerbocker of glory! He's got a head start, lad. We've got to find a way to close the gap. Careful, Gromit. Those lead-lined tires are costly, and they weigh a ton. Shed some pounds. I wonder what could have been that heavy. We puncture free lead line tires. Those didn't come cheap, you know. And how are we going to land without any undercarriage? Huh. Look, we're gaining on him. Churning arm had its work cut out with that batch. Whew. Things are getting a bit sticky back there. Hey, looks like we've sold out of all our cones. That's good news. Direct hit, lad. Hey, now he's up a gum tree. We'll catch him now. Knock up my engine, will they? I can still outrun them with a wind at my back. Ha <laughs> ha! Hey, hey, they've run out of lift! Ah, sorry, my little twitching bag of bones, but no one's coming to save you now. <sighs> Where do you think you're going with that? Eh, hey, fine then. Let go. Escape me, your flea ridden friend. Easy, easy. You've already been fed today. Ow! Get away! Stay away! Now, listen, chickens. This is all your fault, dog. 
Don't lose that arm, Gromit. Nothing a little glue can't fix. Give that back right now. If you want your master to take you for walkies ever again, you'll be very careful with that. Careful, I said. No! My money! Oh, my beautiful money! Help! We're still falling, lad! We could do with some more air. Eh? It should hold us for just long enough. They might have flown too high and suffocated in the atmosphere. Happened to many a bomber in the war. And all to save a poor defenseless puppy. <laughs> Who would have thought Wallace was so selfless and brave? Aye, but more importantly, that blinking fairground felon still got her cash. He's due a soak in the mouth and a kick in the head. Honestly, Duncan, the last thing we need is more violence. We need heroes. Look, by Zeus's beard, what on earth is that? It's a giant mustache. Ah, I've seen bigger. You're alive. Uh, yes, and saved by a whisker. Something of a close shave, eh, Gromit? Oh. -ho. These poor pups won't go homeless after all, Gromit. Me and Mr. Gadley would be thrilled to take them in. No, we wouldn't. Pipe down, you misery guts. Great. Yet another mouth to feed. Three mouths. Oh, no. Anyway, Gromit, feel free to pop by for walkies any time you like. Your friends will always be here. That little one's quite the hero. Have to keep him out of trouble from now on. Wallace! Oh, that was a feat of incredible bravery. Oh, it was nothing, Miss Flit, really. All in a day's work for Gromit and me. Couldn't let Muzzle run off with our twitch now, could we? A man like you is one in a million, Wallace. Your courage, your selflessness, your aerial acrobatics. You could have been killed, yet you saved the poor whippets, apprehended the monstrous mountain muzzle and saved everyone's fortunes. You're a true hero to the town. Oh, um, well, uh, um, thank you very much, Miss Flit. Mm hmm. Uh, now, if only I could find the piece I that... I um... feel a little awkward asking you this, Wallace, but I was wondering... With a bit of elbow grease, I'm sure Gromit and I can have this up and running again by Christmas. Wallace, I... I have a proposal for oh, you. Oh, I wonder where this goes. Oh, Wallace! Uh, yes? A proposal and a ring... Oh, how oh, shocking! I beg your pardon, Miss Flint. Oh, and so polite. Now, calm yourself, Felicity. Will I, Felicity Flint, marry you, Wallace? What? Now, pull yourself together, Felicity, my girl. You mustn't rush into this. I'm honoured that you would have me as your bride, Wallace. But. I must think it over. I shall give you my answer within the week.
Oh, dear, Gromit. Uh, must stop eating cheese last thing. It's given me terrible dreams. Oh, 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 oh. oh uh, last night, I dreamt I'd accidentally become engaged to our neighbor, Miss Flit. Oh, oh, oh. can you imagine? What's this? Oh, no, lad. So it wasn't a bad dream after all. It's a real life flipping nightmare. It's all coming back to me at the fair. I found that lug nut and she thought it was a... Oh, my kitty aunt. Talk about matrimonial misunderstandings. You've got to do something, Gromit. Uh, no. I've got to do something. I must go and speak to Miss Flit at once. I apologize and explain it was all a terrible mistake. I'm sure Miss Flit will understand. She'll probably be relieved when she learns I wasn't proposing marriage after all. It's not as if we've much in common. <laughs> well, I suppose there's nothing for it but to, uh... Ooh. Oh, Major Crumb. Yes? Ah, morning, Wallace. I've come about a professional matter of the utmost delicacy and secrecy. You have? Oh, wonderful. Uh, step into my consulting room and tell me all about it. Seems I'm going to be tied up for a while, Gromit. Uh, on business, uh, why don't you go and put your ear to the ground and find out how the land lies next door? But you need to be discreet. Tread softly. Ears peeled. Eyes open. Don't let critical intelligence fall into the wrong hands. Oh, uh, others are looking for this uh, object. I suppose we can start hunting for clues with my super clue snooper. Capital idea. Uh, still. If there's any information gathering to be done, my eavesdropper is just the tool for it. Eavesdropper? I like the sound of it. This is a matter of the utmost importance, Wallace, or I wouldn't have come. Yes, of course. It's... it's... oh, fiddlesticks, I've forgotten. Oh. Gone. Clean out of my mind. Hmm. Well, uh, that's a poser. An imposter? Where? Uh, no, I mean it's a problem because we... Out with it, man! Spit it out! Great Aunt Prudence, you came so quickly! Of course, Felicity. An urgent summons from one's only living relative and heir to one's fortune can mean only one thing. Man trouble. Now... Who is the blighter this time? I'll box his ears if he's been toying with your affections. Oh, no, no trouble as such, Aunt Prudence. But, well, there has been an important development on the matrimonial front, which... Pardon me, Aunt Prudence. I think I spy an ugly little intruder. Positively love fungi. Come, let's go inside for a cup of tea. Have you come, a mild child? Man trouble always makes me hackles rise and my petticoats fluster. In his spare time, he likes to tinker a little. Tinker? Yes, um, inventions and such like. A handyman? Well, you'll obviously have to put a stop to the inventing. Certainly not in the house. Can't be tolerated. Oh, oh no. Far too messy and intrusive. Hmm. Well, I think you've told me all I need to hear. And so? So long as he doesn't leave his contraptions lying around all over the house, he sounds a very suitable suitor. 
So our engagement has your blessing? I don't see why not. Unless... Yes? Unless, of course... Well, he's not... He's not a member of that... Place, is he? That appalling country club whose name alone makes me shudder. You mean Prickly Thicket? Oh, yes. Oh, heavens, child, you know our family history. We flits have never associated with those dreadful Prickly Thicketers. Oh, you needn't worry, Aunt Prudence. Wallace isn't the Prickly Thicket type. Morning, Mr. Paneer. Constable Dibbins. Delivering the mail as well this morning? Aye. Posty's off sick. He's got the mumps and I've got the ump. Sorry to hear that. Her Majesty's mail must be delivered. And PC Ernest Dibbins has never shrunk from duty. Even when such duties aren't even part of his blinking job description. Here's your post. Ah. Oh. Couldn't help but notice the coat of arms, Mr. Paneer. A prickly thicket, isn't it? Happen. So, you remember then? Hmm? Oh, aye, aye. Practically my second home. Is it now? That's a very interesting coincidence. I was just saying to myself the other day, Ernest Dibbins, it's time you joined a... Oh, my. Excuse me, Constable. What are you staring at? Get along now. Hey up, grommets! Abn, I couldn't help noticing that little item in the society section. The one about your master and Miss Flit. It's true then. Been keeping it a secret though, sly devils. It's all over tip papers this morning. How Monty Muzzle's fundraising funfair was a big fake, and how a certain ice cream vendor and his dog brung him to justice. Hey, you're the mutt what's responsible for my incarceration, aren't you? No hard feelings, mate. Come here. I've got a little present for you. Nosed by order of the law. And all on account of a teeny tiny mouse. Oof, ridiculous, really. But you know Constable Dibbins. He'll let a lot of things go, but he's a stickler when it comes to vermin. Back off. Caught him trying to nick your letter. The important one from <coughs> Prickly Thicket. Oh, that's only the envelope. I've got the letter here. Not bad news, I trust. Oh, no. Quite the reverse. It's my turn to propose a new member. Is it really? Well, I never. It's a heavy responsibility. Not everyone's cut out to be a Prickly Thicketer. The candidate must be a gentleman of impeccable character. Someone who's always there for a friend in need. A pillar of the community. And, of course, a sportsman. Going to be a long search? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, the ideal candidate might be, uh, somebody who's very close to you. Oh? Aye. Somebody who's right in front of your nose, in fact. Ah, yes, of course. You mean Mr. Wallace, my near neighbor and one of my best customers. Wallace? He's no blinking sportsman. He don't know one end of a golf club from t'other. Well, that's true. And he's hardly a pillar of the community, like... Like who? Mr. Paneer. My dear Mr. Paneer. Who? watches over this town centre like a shepherd watches his flock. Who sees to it that everybody stays on the straight and narrow? Oh, you mean you? <laughs> but don't forget, you forgot to find me after that business with the bad bangers last month. Only on account of me soft heart. It's me only failing. 
But don't start getting ideas. I'll let you off with a warning once, but just once. Of course, Constable. Now, you better start getting these crates put away. They're blocking a public thoroughfare. Oh, dear. Not more crates. Good day, Mr. Paneer. I'll leave you to uh, think things out. Out of my way, you. Don't suppose you could use a few crates of super sticky nut butter, can you? I ordered five tubs, but the daft apron at warehouse put me down for 500. How am I supposed to shift 500 tubs of super sticky nut butter? Wait a minute. Take this home to your master. Free sample, courtesy of Paneer's Produce. If you don't like it, you can always use it to fill in cracks before decorating. Constable Dibbins seems to be taking quite an interest in you this morning. Oh, yes. We're great chums, we are. He does me little favours, and I do the same for him. Is that so? Have you got my, uh... Here. Extreme pudding. Been looking forward to this issue. There's supposed to be an in-depth feature on the merits of natural rubber grips versus synthetic. Hello? What's this? Blinking Nora. Is that who I think it is? Well, I'll be. That's our Wallace, that is. Rookie of the Year. I didn't even know he played golf. Oh, he's a man of mystery and no mistake. The constable was just saying what a rotten sportsman Wallace is. Who will be eating his words when he sees that? Yes. What you thinking, Pat? Oh, nothing. The constable's still the best choice. After all, he's been very good to me. Mm, must be nice to have friends in high places. Really leave these crates in the street all day. Ah, my good friend Panea. Glad to see you're doing your civic duty. Oh, yes. <laughs> Wouldn't want to presume on our friendship. That's why I've always respected you, Mr. Panea. Never want to take advantage of powerful friends. You know, when push comes to shove, the law must be obeyed. Honor, duty, and golf. That's the prickly thicket motto. And a fine motto it is. A motto I could easily live by if, say, someone were to invite me to join the club. Say no more, Constable. I thought it over and... Pinky uh... Nick! Crikey! What kind of trick is this? Trick? Uh, no trick. Just a little mix-up. Optical illusion. If you'll just turn the other way for a moment, I'll... Turn the other way? I am an officer of the law, Mr. Panea. But our friendship? I'm sorry, Mr. Panea, but vermin's vermin. And vermin trumps friendship every time. So, that's how it's going to be, is it? Constable Dibbins, uh, this is a pleasant surprise. Uh, what brings you to, uh... Here. Package for you. What do you suppose this is about? It's from Prickly Thicket. Well, I never. They're inviting me to become a member. And they've even enclosed the club's official tank top. Imagine that, lad. A country club. Oh, oh, uh, we're going up in the world, eh, Gromit? Miss Flit. Please, Wallace, you needn't be so formal. Not after yesterday. Call me Felicity. Uh, 
Yes. Uh, about yesterday. I did leave you hanging in suspense, rather, didn't I? <laughs> Not in me. But I do have an answer for you now. Uh, you, you, you do? I couldn't take a step of this magnitude without first consulting my great aunt Prudence. And you'll be delighted to know she has given us her blessing. Isn't that wonderful? Her only caveat. <laughs> and it's almost too ridiculous to mention. <laughs> Is that she forbids us to marry if, <laughs> if you're a member of... <gasps> Reject the sticky bigot, that at ball of cursed cricket. We tell other sports to stick it. Golf for us is just the ticket. Hurrah! Hurrah for prickly thicket! Brother Wallace is duly sworn in in co-conformance with prickly protocol. Devil if I can why it had to be Wallace, but what's done's done. Welcome to the club, Wallace. We await the opening whack. Swing the club, you tube! What's he doing here? This is Monster and Dibbins. <laughs> Stop in the name of the law! I hereby announce that in violation of Municipal Bylaw Number 486, as relating to sports and social clubs, you solve, this club is to be closed forthwith. This is regular. I will state, and I quote, every registered golf and country club must be in possession of no fewer than one fully functioning golf course. Oh, yes, oh, by uh, law. Right, by law. Pardon if I'm a bit, uh, shaky on the upswing, but are you saying that uh, we don't actually have a golf course? Not at the moment, anyway. Had one once. Dashed fine one it was, too. Uh, but uh, the deed was lost. Somewhere within the walls of this club. Some little time ago. 1649? Rotten year. It's a long and terrible story. It's history. And as of tomorrow morning, prickly thicket will be history too. Enjoy your last day at the club, gentlemen. Well, there's only one thing for it, I reckon. Like the booby bobby said, let's enjoy our last day at the club. Capital idea. Perhaps I can get a game of chess in before tea. I still need to work on me cushion technique. <clears throat> uh, pardon me, but but PC Dibbins is going to shut Prickly Thicket Golf Club because it hasn't got a golf course. Oh, that's a nice. cheek. And it hasn't got a golf course because the deed proving its existence is lost. Yeah, deed. Right, that's right. Well, then. There's nothing for it but to find the deal. Easier said than done, laddie. Prickly Thicketers have been searching for centuries. Impossible quest, Wallace. Impossibilities are our speciality at Golden Retrieval. Of course. Now I remember. That's what I hired you fellows to find. The deed to Prickly Thicket Golf Course. The clue finder. Ought to come in handy for finding clues. Could this be a clue? Only the man who has mastered the Ganges and made the impossible shot is worthy to pocket the porcelain key that will slide in the porcelain slot. Master the Ganges? Does that mean the river? Oh. Could it mean... Could it mean... What? Nothing. Just a silly superstition. Eureka! A clue! 
the golden key shall only be obtained by him who earned it. The golfer who, without a clue, took up the game and learned it. To hook and slice is never nice unless ye have direction. A book depicts in stages six the order of perfection. Aha! I've got it now! You have? Rook to pawn three! What's this? Behold the foolish puppy dog, he keepeth very busy. He seeketh for the silver key and spinneth till he's dizzy. The hours pass, he stoppeth not, in daytime nor in nighttime. Methinks he'll findeth not his prize until you see the right time. Lincoln, Nora, this is a riddle and no mistake. Oh, call that poetry, Wallace. I think it's a clue, Major Crumb. Be careful with that book. It's our greatest treasure. The golfer's path to perfection. Aye, our first chairman spent his whole life devising this system. But now it's lost to history. All that remains of the path is the sixth and final step. Perhaps a nice game of golf would help clear the old grey matter. Ah! Time to tee off! Oh! Who am I gonna humiliate today? Wallace, now is it? Is that the best we can do for a challenger? No. Watch how it's done, laddie. Ha! Did you see that? All in one! Am I a McBiscuit or am I a McBiscuit? Your turn, Wallace. Unless you want to throw in the towel. Pick a club. It's your turn, so take a shot. You can swing from the laddie's tee right there, or the lassie's tee down there. For you, I'd recommend the lassie's tee. See that? By heck, the chairman's missed his shot. No, I never. But were the rubbish club what missed it. Well, your turn. Pick a club. How many strokes you reckon it'll take him to get off the tee? Show us your best, Wallace. He did it again. He missed another shot. Um, something's not right. What's going on? All right then. Which club are you going to use? Here comes the fiend of the fairway. Going to swing from the big boys tee this time, are you, Wallace? Look, 
Wally sunk the ball? No, he never. Uh, it's a trick. He... Uh... Crevens. Crikey. Oh. The golden key. The golden key. The key. How do, Wallace? How goes your first and last day at your new club? Couldn't you see fit to spare prickly thicket, Constable Gibbons? Quite devoted to the place, ain't you? Considering you only got sworn in this morning? It's only that, well, the club has such an old history and, uh... Aye, an history of decline and fall, and blatant discrimination when it comes to new members. I beg your pardon? They don't know what they missed out on. Passing over a crack golfer like me. I could have put Prickly Thicket back on map. I could have showed them that... It... Showed them what? It wouldn't mean anything to you, Wallace, but plenty of clubs are killed to have a member who knows the... the Ganges grip. I can't quite make out what you're saying. <laughs> the missus had some of that Mr. Paneer's fancy nut butter. Now she can't open a gob. Oh, dear. Sticky situation, that. Ha, <laughs> I know. Wonder if he's got any more. <laughs> Can't take tea today, lad. Prickly thickets on a bit of a, a sticky wicket, and only golden retrieval can save the day. Grab our detection kit and let's... What's up, Chuck? Uh, uh, good afternoon, ladies. Uh, is there anything I can do for you? <laughs> Wallace! Oh, um, um, oh dear me. My grandniece is a tender-hearted girl, Mr. Wallace. She hates to see a man ruin his life. Uh, I don't believe I've had the pleasure, Mrs. Uh... It's Miss Flit, actually. And I make it a rule never to shake hands with individuals who belong to certain organizations. <gasps> Golf is a barbaric practice, Mr. Wallace. Those caught in its snares inevitably descend into squalor, destitution, and madness. It's all there in this little booklet. Save yourself, Wallace! Madam, but regarding the, uh, uh, charges you've brought against me, I mean to say, is that a fair way to treat a fellow? A bit rough, if you ask me. Fair way? Rough? No! <laughs> you see, Felicity, this is what golf does to the mind. The man is obsessed! A glass of milk? Makes a change for the sort of tipple you imbibe at your club, I'll venture. Very good. Drink your milk. At least that's a wholesome activity. 
Do you think it will restore his senses or prudence? There's always hope. Always handy to have a spanner to hand. I've enjoyed our little chat, Miss Flit. Oh, and a great pleasure meeting you, Miss Flit. Uh, but, uh, moustache? Please, <gasps> try to turn your life around, Wallace. Uh, awfully pressed for time, Gromit. <laughs> Would you mind attending to our guests? <laughs> Please. What in heaven's name happened to him? Shouldn't you be sipping cocktails at this hour with all your new friends at the club, Wallace? Here you are, Mrs. Gabberly. This ought to do the trick. Oh, I can talk again. Now look what you've done, Wallace. And I'll have a few choice words for you tonight. I wonder, Mrs. Gabberly, uh, would you mind awfully if I uh, dip the handle of my golf club into your sticky nut butter? If it'll help you with your detective work, help yourself. I want nothing more to do with the stuff. Much obliged. Now then, about the Ganges grip, I was wondering... You're holding the blinking club upside down, give me that! The trick is to... Hey, think you can steal me secrets, do you? All right, take a gander at this. There now, catch that, did you? Oh. <laughs> What trick are you trying to pull, Wallace? Take your pigging club and bug off, Wallace. I haven't got time for all your sh shenanigans. Much obliged, Constable. That ought to do it. Crikey O'Reilly, this is most irregular. Ganges grip? I told you, Paneer, there's no such... <sighs> By heavens, he's a crimson and key! Talk about a hole in one. Very impressive demonstration of the Ganges grip, Rallis. Oh, well, all in a day's work. You're not planning on another round of snooker table golf, are you? Uh, not at the moment. Major Crumb, you've no wish to see Prickly Thicket closed down. Heaven forbid! So perhaps you could help me recover the deed? Helping others? Out of the question. Against club rules. Tee hee time, everybody. Time for a joke. I say, I say, I say, I'm wearing my lucky golf socks today. Lucky golf socks? What the devil are lucky golf socks? The pair with a hole in one. A sock with a hole in one! <laughs> I say, that one's a Roman. Aye, that one were Goodman Wellis, Hermann's evil hellhound gimlet. A ah, pox on the pair of them. It's them for purse in the predicament we're in today. Really? Aye, for when the devilish Duchess Flit were seizing the golf course and planting flowers on it, my poor Grandpa Rory were desperate. He loved his prickly thicket golf course, like a wee wifey. But he couldn't save it from Flit's men and their terrible chula bulbs. So when they snatched the course from him, robbed him, they did. He hid the deeds to the land, hoping one day to reclaim it and restore it to the noble cause of golf. And that were his biggest mistake. 
hiring them two buffoons to help. You mean Goodman Whitless? Aye, and Gimlet is devil help. Local clockmakers and jacks of all trades they were. Grandpa Rory hired them to build a security system to protect the deed. Well, they built it all right. And made a dashed fine job of it, too. Brilliant. Inspired. Flit's men did their damnedest, but they couldn't disable the system. And nor could anyone else, including Goodman Whitless. Thanks to him, the deeds are still locked away in the walls here somewhere, guarded by his tick-tock state-of-the-art security system. Well, uh, I've done a bit of tinkering myself with security systems. Uh, do you know how this one works? Not a flippin' clue. You need three keys to switch it off, that's all I can. A gold one, a silver one, and a porcelain one. And these keys, uh, where are they to be found? Search me, pal. They're well hid, too. Got security systems of their own, they say. I say, that face looks familiar. Gonna see how? Unless you were round about these parts 400 years ago. That there dusty old dowager is Duchess Flit. Her family owned much of the land hereabouts in those days. And that chappy sneaking out the back that were my great, 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 great grandpa, Lord Rory McBiscuit, come down for his holidays and missed the last coach back to Scotland. I do see a slight resemblance. Aye, he were a bonny lad, and a great one with the lassies. The Duchess couldn't get her fill of him, but as you can see, he cared for nubbit mucking about in a golf course. Twas Grandpa Rory who built Prickly Thicket. And uh, what did Duchess Flint have to say about that? Oh, threw her in a right rage it did. Had her men seize the course by force. Aye. And that's when our troubles began. Tee hee time, everybody. Time for a joke. The fella invites his new neighbor to join him for a round of golf. Neighbors never played golf before. Oh, yes. Awful decent. Very public spirited. Everything's fine till they get to the seventh hole, when the neighbor hits his ball into the bunker. He whacks it and whacks it, but can't get it out of the sand. You're not using the right club, says his friend. I haven't got it anymore, says the neighbor. Hasn't got it? Why in heaven's name not? Because you told me to eat me sandwich before we came out. Eat me sandwich! <laughs> <laughs> now then, I wonder... Crivens! He has found it! He's found it! It's the silver key! He gold lock. Looks like a match. The porcelain key that will slide in the porcelain slot. It appears to be genuine. So you see, PC Plod, Prickly Thicket has a wee golf course after all. I see. And where is this land exactly? 
Well, mm, it... if you can't even establish that, gentlemen, I don't see how... Gangway! Gangway! Used to be in reconnaissance, don't you know? Damn hand at topography. Let me see now. Bit of a rise to the north. River bisecting the 11th fairway. Grove of oaks to the west. Interesting. What, what, is, it? what is it? Naturally, some of the landmarks have disappeared in the intervening years, but if my guess is correct, the 18th green is located precisely on the spot of ground now known as... 62 West Wallaby Street. Well, I'll be. And it's not just my house that's in danger. If Chairman McBiscuit gets his way, the golf course will end up covering most of the... But I'm still jiggered if I understand why you're playing golf through the middle of town. If I win the chairman's tournament, I'll be named chairman of Brickley Thicket, Mrs. Gabbley. It's only the club chairman who can call off the wrecking ball. Why is the chairman's tournament got to be played here? Well, uh, as the deeds show, Mrs. G, uh, we're standing on the site of the original Prickly Thicket golf course. Uh, you see, it's all very logical if you have stopped to think about it. And Chairman McBiscuit sinks his foot, moving him to 20 under par. But let's face it, Pat, you haven't a prayer. Oh, I'm not chucking in the trilby just yet. I've still two holes to play, remember? And I've got one clear advantage. The greatest helper a golfer ever had. Me remote activated auto caddy. Watch this. Uh, 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 hey, Comet, how do you like to man the controls for a while, eh? <laughs> Get away with you. Give up new while you're still behind. Have you not been humiliated enough? Not by half. Uh, which way to the next tee? Well, let's make things interesting at least. Two holes left to play. The wee short hole starts here. And it ends oh, right over there. What a shot! All in one for Chairman McBiscuit. He's on fire today, ladies and gentlemen. Now he strikes us to the 18th tee. The long hole starts right here. And it ends. Oh, by it, what a Bobby Dazzler. Clean out of sight. Hey, Penea, where's it going to come down then? Let me see now. The 18th hole. Yes, that would be uh, 62 West Wallaby Street. Oh, yeah. No, you can play the two holes in either order. Play them both at the same time if you like. First man to finish the pair of them wins the tournament. What do you say? I say. Uh, that's a very sporting offer. I accept. Right then, I'm afraid I haven't got time to hang around here and watch you muff your shorts. I have a victory party to get to. You'd best follow me back to the 18th green, Paneer. You'll not want to miss commentating on my match-winning putt. Hmm. Now then, which hole shall we tackle first? Let's give the short hole a try. Oh dear, that's going to be a tough shot. A spectacular shot, ladies and gentlemen. Spectacularly bad, that is, straight into the sewer. Another stroke of misfortune for the underdog Wallace. Nothing for it but to take the plunge, eh, lad? Not exactly a picnic in the garden, but at least it's dry down here, eh, Chuck? Uh, now to locate the ball and chip it back out. Shouldn't be too difficult, uh... Task? Oh dear. It 
It's in Reet, I say. Mr. Paneer spends all his time announcing about Duncan, when Wallace is just as important. Almost. And we're back, broadcasting live from the Prickly Ticket Chairman's Tournament, here at beautiful 62 West Wallaby Street. If you're just joining us, I'm Mr. Paneer, and I'm here with top-seated player Duncan McBiscuit. We're on the green of the 18th hole. At least, uh, we think this is the green for the 18th hole. To be honest, we're having a right old to do trying to find the actual hole. Are you positive this is the spot? Well, I copied me notes straight from the old deed. Thirteen lengths southwest of the tree, it says. Maybe you're measuring with the wrong club. There's only one official prickly thicket measuring club, and this is it. Uh, yes, this is it, ladies and gentlemen, the thrilling finale to a thrilling contest. Stay tuned and you won't want to miss a moment of the drama. Oh, listeners, it isn't over yet. Not till the ball goes into the cup, here at the end of the 18th hole. We've got the ball, but there is the cup. That's the burning question this afternoon. A question our own Duncan McBiscuit would give his best chipping wedge to answer. You're not taking this measuring club. Not till I've found the hole and sunk my butt. How's Duncan doing? Well, you can see for yourself he's... He's got it in the bag. He's got it in the bag. You heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. Chairman McBiscuit has got it in the bag. Almost. How's Wallace doing? He's at about... He just... Uh, that's a good question. I'd better check on Wallace. Me listeners won't want to miss anything important. There, there, my dear. Oh, it's only Gromit. There he is. And there's no polite way to say this. Down in the sewer, flailing about with his clubs in the filth. And they called him the Rookie of the Year. Who would have thought Wallace would end up down there? Yes, it's happened. Just as I said it would. He's finally hit rock bottom. And only I can save him, his angel of mercy. I'm coming, my poor, addle-headed, falling fool. And while you're down here, you may want to swing by Paneer's Produce, catering to the vegetable needs of the greater metropolitan area for over 25 years. You may want to experience the friendly atmosphere, the swift and efficient service provided by Mr. Paneer, or you may want to experience the low, low prices. But you can't, because Paneer's Produce has been blinking red shut down by an over-officious officer of the law. This so-called public guardian has slapped a punishing fine on poor Mr. Paneer. And for what? A squirrel. A tiny little squirrel loose in his shop, bothering nobody. I urge each and every one of my listeners to protest at this miscarriage of justice. And now, back to the game. Oh, there you are, Gromit. Well, no luck down here, I'm afraid. If only these pesky mushrooms hadn't... Wallace! It's Flint. So it's true. You finally hit rock bottom. As great Aunt Prudence said you would. It had to happen, I know, but oh, so quickly. No matter. Your angel of mercy has come for you. 
I will lift you from this place of degradation back into the light. I'll wipe your burning brow and nurse you back to health. I'll surround you with flowers and music and mushrooms. Out of here! Get me out of here! Oh, you poor thing, you've had a fright. Everywhere! Mushrooms. Come up to the flat, love. I'll fix you a nice cup of tea. I'm not sure I know what to make of that, lad. Do you? But that's the club with the Ganges crib. I'll try anything in a pinch. That sent it in the right direction, at least. Too bad about gravity. Hmm. Down there in the darkness, in the stench and the ooze, with naught but... Uh, now, which club to use? Uh, oh, what do you think, lad? In the cup, ladies and gents, Molly says Sonky's ball. Bringing his score down to just, did they see it? 198 to 215. 235 over par. But the tournament ain't over yet. You know, Gromit, I think I'm starting to get the hang of this game. I'll take the controls now, lad. It'll take a good strong club to get me all the way to West Wallaby Street. Which one to choose? Ah, me blistering iron. Oh dear. Here now. This would be yours, I presume. Depositing non-postal material in Her Majesty's post boxes against the law, I'll have you know. See, it doesn't happen again. Let's try the bouncing rock. Pity the flag isn't in the post box, eh, Gromit? Hmm. Got to play the ball from where it lies, I reckon. Oi, Gromit! Any sign of the ball yet, lad? Wallace's ball! Oh no! This hallway ain't big enough for the both of us! But you didn't see that! And neither did you! See what? Found the ball, lad! Now, uh, which club to use? It'd help if I knew where the hole was. Now, which club to use? Oh, what do you think, lad? Ah, me 
joke book. Oh, this is a good one. I say, I say, I say. Might surprise you to hear it, but I'm a scratch golfer and all. You? A scratch golfer? That's right. I write down all me good scores and scratch off all the bad ones. And scratch off all the bad ones! <laughs> <laughs> what are you up to, lad? Drinking Nora, the eighteenth hole. Looks like a simple shot, uh, but looks can be deceiving. Uh, which club should I use, do you think? Hey, drop that. Do something from it. Another try. All right. What's this? You did it. Chairman McBiscuit still hasn't even located the 18th hole. I hereby declare Horace winner of the Chairman's Tournament and the new Chairman of Prickly Thicket. It's true then. Indeed it is. The long reign of Duncan McBiscuit has come to an end. All hail, hail Chairman, Chairman Wallace. Wallace! Oh, uh, uh, no need to make a fuss on my account. Oh, but there is, Wallace. Heard the entire game on the wireless. This is a new beginning for Prickly Thicket. Aye, an era of peace and goodwill and justice for all. Right, Wallace? Uh, well, uh, that is, uh, yes, uh, I certainly hope so. As Gromit will attest, I've always been very... Gromit! No dogs allowed in the club, lad. You'll have to wait outside. Now, for my first official act as chairman... Three trumpets for all? Uh, no, Major Crumb. My first official act will be to tear up old Roaring McBiscuit's deed and to save West Wallaby Street from the bulldozer. Yeah, of course. Jolly good, jolly good. You carry on, Wallace. Where is he? Where is that wee bogan bump watch? Uh, you mean Chairman Wallace? He's around the corner, tearing up the deed. He cannot do that! Oh, but he can. Tournament's over, and he won it fair and square. But you're forgetting about the sudden death round! Sudden death? Aye, the round where I make sure he meets a sudden death! Oh, Let me at him! Don't, 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 for violation of local bylaw number 682, which prohibits the feeding of Polyporus pilus, commonly known as the bowl shaped mushroom Tuscurus calinensis, or your commoner garden grey squirrel. And as the offence took place on prickly thicket property, I've no choice but to. Uh, knock it up, knock it down, and bury the remains, and we're here to see you do your duty. That's right. Prickly Thicket has caused quite enough trouble. 
kindly point me to the chair. No, I didn't know what to say. And that's what is not my baby. I have to take the consequences. He's mucking about with the oscillating fan. It don't oscillate no more. Suppose I'd better join them. Miss anything important, have I? Well, uh, I haven't actually done anything yet. As you can see, we're packed like a pressure cooker full of sardines. And I wanted to discuss our options before... This guy's topic of, are you a watcher or a leader, Wallace? Well, uh, uh, that is, I, uh, 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 uh. Wafflers waffle! Leaders yes. so It's a trap! Everything's under control. I'm sure there's a simple way to deactivate the lock. It's a sand trap. Uh, no need to panic. Uh, uh, I have an idea. Uh, but to put it into effect, I'll need to shift over to the window. Uh, Major Crumb, could you slide into the empty space? Flanking maneuver, eh? Brilliant strategy. Now, uh, Miss Flit, if you could please move into... Next to you, a golf-playing fancy man who toyed with my Felicity's affections? Certainly not. But Aunt Prudence... A lady must preserve some standards of decorum. Constable Dibbins, if you can move over... I'll give the orders here, if you don't mind. And I'm ordering myself to move over. You realise, Mr. Paneer, we could have avoided this outcome if you'd have chosen a different candidate for membership. You're in the club now, ain't you? Satisfied? Could you shift over a bit, Mrs. Gabberley? I'll have a go. Uh, now, Miss Flit, if you could simply shift your weight... Uh, really? Uh, ...into the empty space. This is intolerable. Miss Flit, uh, I wonder if you could just wiggle over... My pardon? Uh, ...into the empty space. Oh. Mr. Paneer, if uh, you wouldn't mind sliding over. Like this? Pardon me, Mr. McBiscuit. Could you perhaps shift your weight over a bit? I'd like to shift my fist onto your hooter for getting us into this scrape. Dunk, please. All right, lassie, all right. Major Crumb. One step ahead of you, Wallace. Constable Pippins? Perhaps I will. Perhaps I won't. Miss Flit, could you... Uh... Oh. Uh, hello, Felicity. Duncan? Why'd you do it, Felicity? Why'd you want to throw me over for an umpty like Wallace? I'm not interested in Wallace anymore. I'm not interested in any man who... golfs. I bet I'd have given it up. For you, lassie. You would? Aye, from the moment you first brushed me off, I can't you were the one for me. I tried to put my feelings into rhyme, but oh, I'm nae good with words. Your eyes are as deep as the murkiest look. Your teeth are as straight as black blue rock. You remember it? Oh, of course I did. Your eyes aren't too shabby, either. Uh, 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 now, Mr. Paneer, if you move over, I know. Uh, Mr. McBiscuit? Ah, uh, shit, you giggy, I'm shifting. Miss Flit, would you mind move? Where would I? Mrs. Gabberley? Say no more, Pat. Uh, Miss Flit, 
could you possibly uh, just... Next to a man like you? Out of the question. Bring it up at a time like this, Mr. Paneer, but there is an outstanding balance on that pudding magazine. I can't reach my wallet at the moment, Mrs. Gabberly. Of course you can't, love. We can settle up later. Um, Miss Fleet? What an impertinence! And here we are. Oh, much obliged, everyone. Now I can put my plan into effect. Help! Romit! Do something! Help! Save us, lad! The sands of time are running out! Friends are a fine thing, but that was a bit too close. Well, why people are so keen on country clubs is a mystery to me. Then you meant what you said in there about quitting Prickly Thicket. For you, a little sprig of healing. Uh, just a second, Felicity. I don't oh, think I've been introduced to this so young man. Romantic. Sand bath, most invigorating. Cleans out the pores. Reminds me of the good old days in the Sahara. You know, Constable Dibbons, I hear on Grapevine, there may be another, uh, opening at Prickly Thicket. And I've heard a certain grocery shop may be reopening soon, too. <laughs> well, old chum, I'd say Golden Retrieval's first professional investigation has gone rather... <coughs> This, this is rather awkward for me to say. I, I, I mean, I, I know your feelings about me. Oh, uh, you do? But you see, in the heat of adversity, I've discovered that my heart belongs to another. Oh, uh, right oh. So, please, don't say anything to prolong our agony. I must therefore return this to you. Ah, oh, heck, lad. That's two close shaves in one afternoon. I don't know about you, but I could murder a copper. Oops. Hang on just a sec.
time for some cheese, methinks, Gromit. What do you fancy, huh? Eat our more Wensleydale.